Hello, everyone, and peace of Christ to all of you. Please invite your friends and share the link with everybody. Today, our topic is the same uh, as always we do. You know, we try our best to explain to Muslims that deception is not the way to make people believe because sooner or later people will find out. You are not the only one in the internet and you are not the only one who have a mouth but you are the only one who promote his religion by lies and that is your weakness if you can't convert somebody into Islam by telling the truth then I think that will be a solid method to make somebody stay as a Muslim but you will notice after you make somebody convert to Islam maybe a year or two they will leave Islam and they will become enemies of Islam because they will feel so angry for what happened to them. They've been deceived, they've been lied to, and they wasted years of their life worshiping false God and the bad man, his name is Muhammad. So <clears throat> I believe that the way the Muslims, they try to promote their cult, it is a miraculous way to expose Islam. And I'm very thankful actually that the Muslims they choose such a way to promote their cult which will make it easier for us and for me to expose this cult if Islam is a religion coming from the true God then there is no need for anyone to promote false ideas it's not there just in order to gain some people convert to Islam but sooner or later he knew that they will learn the truth and they will leave so what the point of making somebody accepting such a cult I will open my Skype soon so we can have uh, an open challenge for the Muslims so they might call us and convince us that Islam really is a religion which is coming from God and I challenge you to do your best and please no Christian should call me if you are a Christian and you call me now I'm going to block you not only I'm not going to answer you because simply you are not listening and you are disturbing our program my Skype right now is open and we welcome any Abdul who have knowledge to call us and to prove to us anything the Muslim they claim about what it's called miraculous Quran you see I saw many websites I saw tons of articles millions and each time I read those articles I love I love at two things first I love I love at the devil because the devil he could not even hire smart ones to defend him and here and now we prove it every day who is the Muslim when I call me and confirm to us that the Quran is the book of Islam contains scientific knowledge that could not have been known 14 years ago 1400 years ago who is the one who have the courage who have the knowledge you remember a few years a few hours ago we made a broadcast about rejecting the hadith the Muslims these days in order to avoid getting busted they say we don't accept the hadith but just to let you know a person who don't accept the hadith is not even a Muslim this is Islam QR info Islamic website Islamic question and answer refutation of those who quote the Holy Quran to reject Sunnah and justify not acting upon it there is some people claiming that the Quran is written that the Prophet Muhammad once told someone something uh, to his wife and she told that 
to someone and the prophet was not happy by that he did not want the people to know his saying but just to follow the Quran the answer firstly Islam is based on two main foundation the Holy Quran and the pathetic prophet oh, sorry the 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 prophetic uh, Sunnah it's my uh, uh, excuse my French so this is really what Islam is about in order to be a Muslim you have to be to base your religion in two things Quran and the Sunnah and Sunnah mean what whatever Muhammad he said or did so anyone he says to you I don't accept the Quran he is saying I don't sorry I don't accept the hadith or etc he is saying I don't accept Islam and simply he is playing the game of deception in order to avoid the disasters his prophet he said imagine if the hadith was containing something wonderful there's nobody will say I don't accept the hadith the whole point of saying I don't accept the hadith because the hadith is exposing the silly the pathetic the idiot the idiot the liar the uh, uh, the ethic uh, the crimes uh, uh, the misleading of Muhammad therefore the only way if I am a Muslim to keep myself from being humiliated by following such a man Ustaz responding to you in the show. Who is Taz? This guy, he does not know even two words. If you want, he can call me. The Nigerian guy. <laughs> Ustaz. <laughs> and he called himself Ustaz. <laughs> you know, the sign, the sign of a scumbag is the one who gave himself a title. Because if you put in the front of your name and you write that, you say it's Ustaz. Let us say I say Ustaz. Ustaz mean master, teacher. So if I call myself teacher, that's him. That obviously this is not true because the, the people should call you teacher, not you call yourself teacher. My friend, those people there they are making they are scamming the poor nigerian people to take their money this guy he have nothing to do in life wearing a suit where people in, in africa they are dying from hunger and he have a microphone and he's making himself ustaz but he cannot speak about two things and the guy himself he got himself busted he said he agreed with the bible against the quran and nasara are not People who Quran mentioned them as uh, the Messiah says, I'm sorry. He said they are coming from the word Nazareth, which means the Bible is saying the truth and Islam is a lie. All those who claim to be teachers these days, they are not. And here we go. I don't I don't mind if you call me. If you like to call me, he can call me. All right. If you want to call. The stream is a frozen no the stream is going fine okay my friend just refresh your page okay, what I can do I mean this is YouTube let me see so you don't hear me now No voice. Mm. I don't know what's happening.
I hope the voice is coming now. Let us see. I restarted the browser. Is it all right now? Okay. Is is the are we are we fine? Are we back on air? Are we back? All right. I don't know what happened. I think this is maybe YouTube problem. It's going to be from my side. Because I uh you know, I keep saying uh, in the name of Allah and there's no way Allah will make uh, things like this happen. You know, Allah is very powerful. So anyway, <clears throat> Again, invite your friends. We lost, uh, uh, you know, a lot of people by by this, but it's okay. They will be back. Now, when somebody call himself Ustaz or call himself Master or call himself whatever, and you know, I mean, it's a it's a silly. It's the same Muhammad. He called himself a prophet. You see, in order to be called something, people they should call you prophet. Muhammad he claimed. He called himself a prophet, but if we go and examine anything Muhammad he said, we will we will die laughing at his prophecy. So here you notice that Islam is suffering, and because Islam is suffering badly. Muslims denied more than 80% of Islam because Islam is actually in the Sunnah not in the Quran The Quran is an empty book The Quran is nothing but a collection of stories and they are useless in order to establish a religion The Quran is a good book if you want to read a story about how Suleiman he heard the end which is a funny story because ants don't talk and you cannot hear their speeches because simply they are mute the Quran is fine if you want to hear a story about Ali Baba and the 40 thief the seven the, the seven sleepers and their dog uh, the man with the two horn where he found the sunset but what does this have to do with religion anyway I mean why even those stories are there if I read the story about Suleiman that he took a flying carpet and he fly from here to there okay what this will help islam i mean what what is the what, where is the teaching about allah in this why we are concentrating in this funny book about people but not about god this is the book of god to teach me about god but this book teach me nothing but fairy tale stories a guy a king he take his army he walk in the valley the valley is called the valley of the ants one of the ants, she said to the other ants, hide otherwise so the man will crush you. What we learn from this story? Is that will show me the glory of God? This is will show me the stupidity of this God. Because who in the world would believe in such a story? There is no wisdom in it. There is no reality in it. And it's against even the basic science. If we go in the Quran, just to show you when the Muslim they speak about miraculous, miraculous, let us see the miraculous. Let us see the miraculous and love. If we go to the chapter of actually it's called the chapter of the ants <laughs> the chapter of the ants i mean no comment when they come to the valley of the ants one of the ants said here I have a very little tiny question to the Muslims. Why only one of the ants said? What about the rest of the ants?
Hmm? The value of the ants. A valley full of ants. Solomon, he heard only one ant. Why? This is the only ant is using cell phone. This is the only uh, ant was talking. This is the only ant she is allowed to speak in the name of the White House. Who is this ant who Suleiman he heard her? And why he heard one ant? And how in the world this ant she was able to be heard by Suleiman when ants don't talk? As you see, Suleiman he was amused at her speech. Speech. Ants communicate in two ways chemical and vibration. They don't talk, they don't hear. And to make it more funny, the ant she said to the ant, hide, oh you ant, get into your habitations, lest Solomon and his host crush you. How she knew the name of Solomon? So for sure I have to say, this is a miraculous Quran. It's a miracle. This ant must be a prophet of God too. She was inspired. And she knew that this guy, his name is Solomon. Imagine an ant right now. She tell the other ants, hey, Christian Prince, his life on air. Hide, otherwise he will debate you. How in the world this amazing ant, she was able to know that the name of the prophet Solomon is Solomon. Because as you see, this is what she said. She did not say hide, otherwise those creatures, they will destroy you. She said, hide lest Solomon will destroy you. The one who's asking me when I talk about... Uh, 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 okay, hold on. We have a Muslim. He want to talk about... The, sp the sperm coming from the backbone. Let us see what this guy want to say to us. Answer, Abdul. Well, internet is bad. So he, he want to debate me, but he don't have internet. All right. So as you see, this is the miraculous Quran. Hello. Hello, yeah. Yes, my friend. You said uh, you want to tell me about the sperm coming from the backbone, and you said I give uh, daif hadith. Yeah. Mm. Yes, I won't talk about it. Yeah, uh, sperm comes from the back. Yeah. Mm, okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. But uh, my um, <laughs> stupid. Your mother, she must be a whore. She gave birth to you in the bar. Let us continue. As you see, this is how trashy they are. Trashy, low class. They have no dignity and obviously you are not coming from a good mother otherwise she will not have a such a son like you the good tree give good fruits you are a son of a poison tree both your parents they are horrible and they did a very bad job so keep doing what you are doing you are just presenting your family
Uh, I am currently doing the class of Shen research papers now. I mean, it's funny. Somebody's asking me which book to read about Islam. Read my books. What I will say to you. Okay, let's see. Many text. Too many text, but none of them is useless. I mean, useful. Uh, don't send me text, guys, saying thank you, please. Don't send me... Uh, we appreciate you. I, I am not waiting for those texts. Don't please. If you want to say that? You can say that in the in the, in the chat. All right. Somebody is an ex-Muslim. He want to talk about himself. Maybe wrong time. Not yet. Okay. All right. So not even a single person from Skype is is good to you know. I, and I said many times, please don't send me tons of text. You are wasting my time and your time. I will not answer hello, I will not answer hi, I will not answer I appreciate you, I will not answer because simply if I answer everybody, I better close my program and just to start saying hello, thank you very much, thank you very much, thank you very much. And then we will do the same as Muslims do. When a Muslim, he enter a movie theater, he have to follow the tradition of his prophet to shake hands and say assalamu alaikum. By the time we finish shaking hands and say assalamu alaikum three times to each person, the movie will be over. So either people they stop sending me those messages or I will stop using my Skype. Period. Because it is silly and it doesn't make sense. I put my Skype on air or let us say online so people they can see it so they can call me and that is the Muslims to debate me. Not to receive hello, I appreciate you. If you appreciate what we do, copy the video, share the link. Post a comment, give a like, or you own make your own channel. We continue. So when a Muslim he tried to convince us that he have a miraculous book, how this miraculous book convincing will function? In which way? How? Where we can bring this from? Who is a Muslim? He want to show us the miraculous book. This is not miraculous. This is a full book full of stories. It's not even good for kids. A prophet who God taught him the language of the birds. The language of what? The bird. Okay, he taught him the language of the birds. So how he understand the language of the ants? How silly the author of the Quran. Imagine I say that I learned the language of the chicken and then I say to you, I heard the crocodile saying something. Well, my God, he taught me the language of the chicken. How silly, how stupid the author of the Quran. So when Muhammad, he spoke, that his God, he taught Sulaiman the language of the birds. He was preparing us to know why he was able to speak, or sorry, to hear the ant and understand the ant. But the ants are not birds. 
Are they? Uh, someone asking, what is the website I use? Okay, it's called Quran Wow. Actually, they chose the right name for the Quran. This is the this is the website I use. This is not this is an Islamic website for sure. Okay, there we go. So here you notice that the miraculous Quran is the most silly. most stupid book which does not make sense contradiction in less than 20 words many contradiction in less than three lines how this is can be the book of god and how this book can be miraculous my god he taught me the language of the ants but yet i can understand Sorry, he taught me the language of the birds, but he understood, but I understand the ants. Maybe at that time the ants were used to be birds. This is the ant talking. And now Suleiman, like, wow. <laughs> Look what she said to the her followers. <laughs> I'm amused. I'm amused by her speech. Any donkey in the world can go on right now and search in Google, and you'll find that ants don't talk. Ants they talk, yes, if we can say communication, which means they communicate as all creatures, but not by making a speech, you idiot. They are mute, they are deaf. So when you say to me and you fabricate tons of articles speaking about how amazing the miraculous Quran, I say yes. It's a miracle that the Quran made a human being like you such a donkey to believe in a book like this. This is the only miracle I see. Any Muslim would like to call us and show us the miraculous? I don't want to call Zach and Naik because Zach and Naik, he will explain this and he will refute me. If we call Zach and Naik about the ant, how the ant, uh, how Allah, he taught him the language of the birds and uh, he spoke the language of the ants, uh, for sure he will say, But that's it. They're the guy, they're the contemporary. And they already accused the Quran with false statement if you go to the quran in chapter 27 verse number 16 it says that allah he taught a prophet Solomon the language of the birds but this ignorant he do not know that ants are considered to be birds and actually they even lay eggs why the ants lay the eggs because they are a thicken they are a form of thicken a form of bird thank you very much here we go he wants like an egg, he gave it an answer. The proof that the ants are chickens that did pose they lay eggs. I mean, here we go. He refuted me, he got me busted. Why you ask me to call him? And do you see how fast he is in fabricating an answer? Unbelievable. Actually, to be honest, I'm the one who gave the answer, not him. This guy, he will never be able to come with an answer like this. <laughs> Do we have any Abdul? Anyone? Any half one? Any quarter one? Your scholars are jokers. They are comedian. They are silly. They are stupid. And they are good for, you know. And I know they are good for what? And the funny, they, are, they live like kings. You see this guy is like a neck he lived literally like a king a 
Islam is a great business if you try to defend Islam. Islam is a bad business if you attack it. Uh, do we have any Abdul? Our IP founder is on, so we will not get the same stupid idiot calling again. Any Abdul here would like to call me? Anyone? Any half one? Now, if we go to the Muslim website where they post for us all those miracles, And they are assuming that all of us are a bunch of ignorance and we do not know how to refute this. The speed of light. Let us start from the first one. The Quran spoke about the speed of light. Are you sure? Let us see. The speed of the angels turn out to be the known speed of light. <coughs> <laughs> That's uh, man, this is the speed of the angels turn to be the speed of the light. Why? How? Let us read together. Quran chapter 32, verse number five. Allah rules the cosmic. Cosmic? Does it say really cosmic? Mm -hmm. What cosmic? Let it go, let it go. You change the translator, you will find there's no cosmic there. But let it go, let it go. A fear from the heaven to the earth. Then this affair traveled to him a distance in one day at a measure of 1,000 year of what you count. Hold on. Hold on. I want to go with the Muslim theory before we go and discuss the speed of light just to show you how stupid the Quran is but the problem is people when they read they don't use their brain they just read I mean text like you know there's some people they lined words up together they don't read they line them up I'll explain to you what the, what the Muslim just did to themselves and I have to use my uh, artistic skills forgive me for doing that as long as the Muslims agree that there is a distance we can reach where we can find Allah because they said that the angels take the angels take a distance or guys you lost me do you see my screen guys before you ask me if you are if, if the uh, why it's not coming refresh your page if your page is not working guys am I heard is my screen showing okay so before you text me please just refresh the page see if it is you or ask people in the text don't ask me is it me only ask people in the text is it me guys only I don't see him why do you want to ask me? Here we go. We made everybody now say the same words just to know if this is true or not. Text in the in the chat. Ask guys, I don't see him. Is it working for you? They will answer you. Now, as long as the Muslims they say that the angels they reach to Allah in a distance which is equal to one day to Allah, which is a thousand year for us. That's mean. And I want the Muslims to try to use their brain for once in their lifetime if they have a brain. So here is the angels. Angels. 
This is Jibril. I will, I'm going to call him Gigi. Gigi. Like the guy who is a stupid loser who his mom, she did not teach him how to behave. So Gigi, he want to go up to, uh, uh, he come to the earth. And now he want to go up to Allah. And Gigi will take him a distance of 1,000 years of our time to reach to Allah. And here is Allah. Al Lah, the moon god. As long as the Muslims they accept such a thing, they accepted that if we go with the speed of light for one thousand year, we arrive to Allah. That's mean we knew where is the location of Allah. Correct, guys. Because in order to say the distance of the angels to go to Allah is one thousand year speed of light, that's mean we can measure exactly where is the location. Because the speed of light can be measured by kilometers. Are we following, people? Are you following me? So all what we need to do, if we search right now, what is the speed of light? Speed of light. Is Let us use kilometer. This is the speed of light is one thousand seventy nine one thousand. Let us see here to be sure. Okay, hold on. I'm just looking in the internet for me I'm not a scientist so the speed of light is uh, 300 uh, thousand kilometer a second 300 thousand kilometer a second so if we if we uh, uh, X that uh, like this is need a mathematic to see how many a day let us see speed of light in a, in one day Maybe we can find an answer. How fast the light uh, travel? But anyway, the idea is very simple. As long we knew the speed of light and how much it can pass as a, as a, as a distance, then we knew already where Allah is located. And that means Allah is located in a fixed place. In a fixed place in order for this Allah to be located in a fixed place he have to be a fixed person correct and that's mean that Allah is a physical being in a physical place in a physical distance is a physical location Which mean Allah is not everywhere. Which mean He is limited. He is content. He is located. And He don't move. Same time. When the angels 
they go in the speed of light according to the Muslims and take them 1,000 year how Muhammad he was able to go to heaven in a top of a flying donkey in less than eight hours round the trip including going to Jerusalem One thousand year will take the angels just to go up to go down again is another one thousand year. So one thousand years to go up, one thousand years to go down. That the total of two thousand years. Yet Muhammad, he claimed, he went to Allah in the top of a donkey and he was able to go there in less than eight hours and come back. And his way, he did not even stop in Mecca. When he was coming back, he stopped in Jerusalem, supposedly. So here we find that Muslims, they are trying to create from fictions what something they can use as science. Now we go back to the article so we can love more. The angels who carry out those orders, those people back then measured the distance neither by kilometer or miles, but rather by how much time they need to walk. By what? How much time? they need to walk but if you notice here with, with me in the in the verse it doesn't talk about the distance it talk about time or what is saying that it take a thousand year of our counting for the angels to go down to go to Allah which is one day for Allah and here we have another problem in the Old Testament, there is a metaphorical statement where it says that one day for you is the same, one thousand year for you is the same as one one day for God. But this is metaphorical. This is not about because there is no time for God. Muhammad he copied that and he tried to make a story out of it and he put it in the Quran and now it became funny. Why? Because if one day is equal to Allah time, as they explained to us in this article. That means Allah is included in the time. In order for one day for Allah to go, 1,000 years for us, they go. That means Allah have time, we have time. But the time of Allah is a lot faster for us, is a lot slower. The difference between us and them and Allah that one day for him is equal to 1,000 years of our time. But that will not change the fact that Allah now is under the force of nature and he himself, he like encounter something called time and he have a day, a day for him. If we go to the front verse in the Quran, we will find something more funny and more stupid contradicting what the Muslims try to say. I did not read the article yet, but we will go there and we will show you because in the whole article, there's nothing about the light speed. I mean, do you see anyone? I will give you, I will give you the link. And if somebody can show me where they got the light speed, how they notice that the angels, they, they, they have the light of speed, I have no idea. Because in order to know what is the speed they pass, to make it equal to the speed of light, then we have to know how much a distance they pass. Do you know the distance of Allah? You know what I mean? All what we have in this uh, in this uh, statement here, that one day for Allah is equal to 1,000 years of your time. And that would take the angels to go up to heaven. But this is mean that it take a 1,000 year
for the light of Allah if he is light to come to us which mean if Allah he sent his light or a light came from the location of Allah is going to take 1,000 years before this light arrived to us and that would be very funny because simply the second you say to me that it's going to take 1,000 years for the light to come we find out the location and nowhere in the verse is speaking about such a thing if we go to the verse in the Quran we will find a contradiction you can read the article by the way because there's nothing here is about the light speed or etc it's just a fiction they are trying to create where anyone can show me where, where they got this one the angels carry out the order of the etc measure distance between neither in kilometer or by, by, by walk for example if it is two days uh, this is mean the distance equivalent to walking uh, for two days uh, 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 but this is not what this uh, verse is saying it says that Allah have angels and angels come to us and it take for Allah one day it take for us 1,000 year but we do not know how it take for the angels themselves are you following with me according to science if you change your location time change time is uh, relevant to to where uh, where you are located so if you change your location you are in the space one year in the earth it might be maybe four years in different place or five years depend where are you time is not the same here Allah is fixed in his place we are fixed in our place the one is moving is the angels and the angels in order to go through the time they have to go through multiple time because this is a changed based on the location time change based on the location same time the Quran give us a contradiction because in different verse on the Quran Muhammad he said that the distance between Allah and the earth is 50,000 years. In chapter 70, verse number four, it says, The angels and the spirit. Askent into him in a day, the measure were for as 50,000 years. Okay, so what happened now? Did Allah change his location? This is the same angels, and this is the measurement of 50,000 years of our time. Our time is still the same. So now we have two chapters, one saying that the angels go to Allah and take them 1,000 years to go there, and one, it says, 50,000 years. In order for the Muslim to solve this issue, they say, this verse here is speaking about the judgment day. It doesn't matter. Because judgment day or today is no different. Why is going to take them 50,000 years? What? They are out of gas? You told us that the angels, they, they go in the speed of light. And it take them 1,000 years to go to Allah. So what happened now? Why it became 50,000 years? They, 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 they lost their speed? The angels are out of gas? Their light is, uh, is damaged? 
maybe the light is going through going through the bullets or th through the walls you know what i'm saying my friend <laughs> here we go the speed of the light so why the muslim they choose that verse to say this about the speed of light not this one where none of them is speaking about light why Allah don't say well look, this uh, this is the speed of light can't he say that we go back to the article and laugh again at more contradictions <clears throat> Yes, GG. Hello, can you hear me? Oh, this is not GG. Oh, well, yes, I hear you. Yes, uh, I want to reject Islam. You want to reject Islam? Yes, I want to reject Islam. Mm. Why do you want to reject Islam? I want to reject the version that ISIS uses to spread evil throughout the world. Mm. This is Kenny Bon. Uh, uh, and, right? and I want to. How are you, Kenny? How are you? Version how are you, Kenny? I want to reject the version. That How are you, Kenny? How are you, Kenny? How are you? People like you use. Did to, you did you buy my books or not yet? To paint uh, an ugly picture of Islam with broad strokes of your brush. Hmm. So let me That's ask you. Islam. You said you reject Islam, which is ISIS Islam, correct? Yeah, in the version that you try to paint. Okay. A of. Well, isn't it isn't it ISIS Islam in the Quran? <clears throat> no, sir, it isn't. Do you want to take a challenge? <clears throat> What I want to do is I want to reject Islam that ISIS uses mm -hmm. and the Islam the Islamophobes mm -hmm. use. Okay. Where you try to well, hijack okay, let, let me, let me, Okay, let me ask you. To, okay, okay. Let us, let, us, let us see. Let us see. Let us see. What, sure. what name for me one thing ISIS did is not Islamic. Uh, well, anytime you oppress people, if you kill people uh, unjustly, Mm. And you destroy what unjustly mean? What uh, tell me how you kill people justly? Lies. Tell me how you can kill people justly. So you are saying to me, your prophet he killed people, but justly, right? Only in self defense, absolutely. Only in self defense. Okay. Let right. us see. So if someone is all right. All right. Okay. 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 Let us see. Only in self defense. Okay. Is it your prophet? Is it your prophet who but said I've been ordered? Is it your? Is it your prophet? He said I've been ordered to kill all mankind until they convert to Islam or they die. As a Muslim, I want to reject the uh, version. You are not a Muslim. You are a potato. You are just a guy who is an idiot who do not know what to do. Seeking attention. Read for me the screen. Read what is in the screen. I'm not. I'm driving. You right said now. You, you're always you call me when you are driving. I think. Right. I think you're not right. driving. I think somebody is driving you. Now listen. I want you to read for me. It says I have been commanded that I should fight against the people till they declare that there is no God but Allah. Are you saying your prophet was ISIS? I'm telling you that. The Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessed be upon him, only fought in defensive. Oh, here we go. He did not say, I am defending. He said, I am in order to fight until, until they declare, until they declare, not until they stop fighting me. Stop lying. Right. Until the until the oppressors stop fighting. Right. He it's said, until you declare, not at the oppressor. Read with me. He said, until they declare, no God but Allah. And when they do, perforce, there's no God but Allah. And their blood and their richness are granted protection from in my behalf which mean if you don't say Allah is God and you don't say Shahada Muhammad will take not only your life will take your money well let's let's put let's put this in the reality okay mm -hmm. so there were many people that were fought against the Muslims that actually become Muslim right and mm -hmm. so you your your opportunity to do so is not and it's not too late until the day of judgment you are not answering you see you are a potato but no, I am, answer I am what I it. showed you. Answer what I showed you. Did your prophet said I've been commanded to kill all mankind until they say Islam is the only religion? Yes or no? Was sent as a mercy to all of mankind. What mercy? And okay, answer I me. Why you not answer? I showed I showed you what your prophet said. I want you to answer that. Go ahead. The Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, hmm. instructed the Muslims to hmm. fight only in just cause. That means against the pressure. This is just call. Just call. Anyone who rejects Islam, he, anyone who rejects Islam is in war with Allah. Anyone who rejects Islam, there were many people around the Prophet and the Sahaba, uh, peace and blessings be upon them, that that rejected Islam. He killed them all. 
all who reject when, Islam, when, either they are killed or uh, 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 you are a liar. Okay, let me ask you why there's no Christian, why why there's no Christians, why there's no Christians, no Jews left in the Arabian Peninsula. There are Christians and Jews in the Arabian Peninsula. Who, who is the donkey who said that to you? Uh, look, if you don't know uh, uh, facts, I can't, you know, I'm not going to debate it with you about. You know facts. the facts. Okay, so you are saying to me your prophet is a liar because your prophet said, read the hadith with me. It says, I will expel the Jews and the Christians from the Arabian Peninsula. Fighting and oppressing the Muslims. Stop, don't stop lying. No, he said, I will expel the Jews and the Christians from the Arabian Peninsula and I will not leave any but Muslims. Muslims. The ones that were pressing the Muslims. Abdul, you are the a big fat potato. Were... Read the hadith. Show me where it says only those who fight. He says, I will expel the Jews and the Christians from the Arabian Peninsula. And now in Saudi Arabia, there's zero Christians, zero Jews, zero atheists, zero gays, there is zero lesbian. Correct. <laughs> Period. That's good. Get lost, donkey. I have no time for stupidity. And don't call me again. Wasting my time. The prophet, he they killed people only justly. Your prophet, he sent the three letters die or convert. Aslim Taslam. Aslim Taslam. Even the Quran forbid the Muslims to go for peace unless. They are not the uppermost. Let us see. Aslim, Taslam. Enter Islam and you will be safe. Enter Islam. Okay. And if I enter Islam, what will happen? You will be safe. Do you see it? So they lie to us. They say Muhammad, etc. Muhammad, he said it clearly. I've been ordered to kill all mankind unless they convert to Islam and they pay the say the shahada and they pay the zakat and they pray as we pray and they face the qibla, which means they face the Kaaba, slaughter as we slaughter. Do everything exactly as I do, otherwise I will kill you. As simple as that. If you break any of those commands, you will be considered as an upper state. This is why ISIS, when they see someone, he claimed to be a Muslim, but he don't pray, he is not to be considered as a Muslim. And look who is uh, somebody telling me this is Kenny Bomer, the American convert. Don't fall into his lies. You want to teach me how to who to convert to who who uh, who uh, uh, Mr. Dan? You want to tell me who is the one? I mean, are you, what about you take my place and tell me what to talk to, how to talk to people? The people are funny. I've been ordered. To do qital, which means to kill. Let us see the command of the Prophet. And maybe you saw ISIS putting chains in the necks of people. You are the best of the people ever raised up for benefit of mankind. Between to bracket benefit of mankind. Okay, what is the benefit of mankind, the prophet of Allah? And then he quotes for us at chapter 3, verse 110. The best for mankind are those who bring them. Bring who? Bring mankind. And with the chains around their necks. Till they embrace Islam. That is Islam. So the Prophet, he fight only those who fight. Who says the best of mankind is those who go and bring people with the chains around their neck. All people. 
the benefit of mankind who is the ones that target to bring them with the chains mankind in order to do what just to make them agree that Muhammad is a prophet this man he subdued all man power to worship him and make himself equal to God so he make hundreds of millions of idiots to go for war for one target to surrender to Muhammad who is dead in the ground and he is a dust and he smelled like poopoo -poo when he died and yet you will see a scumbag calling us and says I reject the version of Isis is this Isis or this is your prophet are we making things up is that hadith is da'if this is Sahih al-Bukhari da'if brother da'if this is da'if brother I reject the hadith is da'if is it the Quran said that Allah he order to cut the necks and fingertips of the disbelievers Is it the Quran says to crucify them and cut their hands? And this is exactly what ISIS do. When you hear a verse like this saying, the punishment of those who wage war against Allah, you think that they are really waging war. This is not about war. Go and read the story behind it. Nobody wage war. This is the punishment. There's a guy, he's a sheikh. He saw a dream. He saw a dream that Allah Messenger Muhammad, he came to him in the dream. And he said to him a few things. In less than 48 hours, he was arrested, taken to Sharia court. And now he is, you know, he's facing more than 80 count of violation of Islam just because he saw a dream. All of them goes under this verse, chapter 5, verse number 33. And now the Sharia law court asked him for cutting his hands and his feet and putting nails in his eyes as a punishment by crucifixion. Just for seeing a dream. What is the war? When somebody says to you war and he is a Muslim, they are talking about you rejecting Islam. The second you are rejecting Islam, you are waging war against Allah. <clears throat> Who is the enemy of Allah in the Quran? Anyone reject Allah? <clears throat> whoever is the enemy of Allah and his angels and messengers to Jibreel and Mikael Allah is the enemy of the kuffar you, but you cannot have a war with Allah we cannot kill Allah supposedly simply he doesn't exist we cannot kill the angels if they are real oh I forgot you can in the case of uh, Moses when the angel of death came to Moses Find the hadith. Hmm.
Let us see what we can find. <clears throat> Abu Huraira reported that the angel of death was sent to Musa's peace upon him to inform him of his Lord summons when he came Musa's boxed him on and his eyes was knocked out what the heck Musa's he was doing boxing with the angel of death Azrael. the angel of death came out back to Allah this is the miraculous Muhammad and the miraculous Quran and the miraculous stories of the, of, of this cult watch and love, and, and love so the angel of death came back to Allah and he said you send me to a servant who do not want to die. What the heck? This guy, Musa, he don't want to die. Allah restored his eye in its proper place. Boing. The poor angel, he was coming inside the house of Allah and his eye is coming out like boing, 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 boing. And Allah, what happened to you? What happened to your eye, idiot? Uh, you know, this is Musa's, uh, he have, uh, uh, you know, a black belt. He knocked my eye and he took it out. And it looked, my eye is broken. And not only actually, there's different hadith says he knocked his eyes and he broke his wing. So now the guy, he have one brain, one, one wing is broken. So he knocked his eye and he went to Allah and Allah, he restored his eye back in the proper place, which is in his nose. Or between his eyebrows and revived revived his eyesight so how you say to us in the in the story which we are talking about the speed of light you are saying to us that the angel they have the speed of light but they have eyes and you're a prophet he said they have wings Jibril specifically he have 600 wings Is that metaphorical or physical? Obviously, it's physical. This cannot be metaphorical. Here we go. You see, he did destroy his eye. And this is Sahih Hadith. Now, Allah, he fixed his eyesight and he said to him, go back to him and tell him that if you want life, he must place his hand on the back of an ox. Uh oh and he would be granted as many years of life as the numbers of the hair is covered by his hand this is why my friend you want to have a big hand if you have a small hand you live, you live less he musa said my lord what happened then he said then you must court death but notice with me here, the story is telling us that Muhammad is officially stupid. Why? Because if Moses can object the order of God and the command of God to die, and he beat the angel of death, that's mean all of us, we can do that. Why only Moses was able to beat the angel of death? The answer can be found in Chong Fong Ching Ching Chong Samurai School. If you go and do some research about Musa's, you will find that he have many built in the Kung Fu. And he was even, even he was a master of a Bruce Lee. Actually, Bruce Lee, he was called by that name because each time Musa, he see him in his way, he see, leave from my way. And this is how Bruce Lee got his name, because Musa, he spank him, and he make him Lee in the side. So the people, they call him Bruce Lee, which is coming from the word Musa's Lee, because Musa's 
in the Chinese language come as Bruce Lee, you know. So Bruce Chen he ha he. So Musa says he can beat the angel of death. Okay, I want to ask the Muslims here. Why Musa don't beat the angel of death again and ask for more? Because as long Allah cannot kill him, as long he can kill the angel of death, as long Allah cannot accomplish death without the angel of death, and Musa can beat the heck of the angel of death. Why angels can kill Musa even in the future? Hmm? So in the article they say to us the angels are in the speed of light. We have two verses in the Quran, one saying that the angels they speed in 1000 year of your time, one day to Allah. The other verse says 50000 years, one day to Allah, which is contradiction. Nowhere in the verses speaking about light, nowhere in the verses speaking about speed in order to know what how how, how fast the speed. Nobody knows where Allah is located. So how the Muslim they come to the conclusion that this is the speed of light. Stupidity versus fictions in order to make a miracle they made an article for us but nowhere in the article can prove to us any of what they claim it is the opposite as we see the more we study about this issue the more we find that the muslims are a bunch of hypocrites and they are making up stories lunar calendar month 12 12 months a year Read the article on love. By the way, why Allah He chose the twelve moon or cal moon calendar a year? Isn't it, this is a mistake? The lunar calendar is a wrong calendar. Can't Allah come with better calendar? Anyone? And look what here they say. That Allah is saying, then God saying the angels travel in one day the same distance that the moon travel in 12,000 lunar. Where is that? They say to you, because in the Quran it says that the year for Allah is a 12 moon. But this is the year for you, you idiot, not for Allah. I mean, sometime, and if we go actually and we accept that this is for Allah, the Muslims, they will lead us to something more, more nice. Look how they fabricate. They say to you, that Allah in the Quran he says the year for Allah is a 12 month but in order to for us to believe that this is a year in the time and the location of Allah that means Allah in his location there's a moon he's not talking about our moon but in fact he's talking about our moon this is why he is adopting the four month it's called the secured month which is the Arab used to practice before Islam the number of the months in the sight of Allah is a 12 in a year. Which year? Our year. We can go and read the interpretation. So or the night by him, the day he created the heaven and the earth. So since Allah, he created the earth and the heaven, from the beginning, Allah created the day and the night to be the same as today and the year was 12 months as now. But this is, by the way, according to science, this is wrong. According to science, the earth does not have the same time as today. Yes, it have day and night, but the day and the night is not 24 hours like now. And in the future is not going to stay the same. So the day and the night are not the same same time it is impossible that allah is god yet he says that for him a perfect year is a 12 lunar
if you notice here here the word they say the word month is if you go in the article they use the word lunar anyone knows why why in the translation they did not use the word lunar here they have lunar in the Quran translation they use the word month the word shahar is not an Arabic word this is an Aramaic and a Hebrew word in the same time shahar mean moon so when you say 12 shahar you don't say 12 month you are saying 12 moon and that is additional proof that your God Allah is a fake God because the lunar calendar if this is the calendar of Allah is a proven very easy to be a wrong calendar this is why we have to fix it every few years it's not complete Muhammad here was copying people around him who have the lunar calendar including the Jews the Sabi and they have it the Jews they have it the Arab they have it and Muhammad he follow what he learned from people behind him or before him so in order to fabricate and to come with the with the speed of light they have to make an article have nothing to do with reality and it's far away from any any truth neither the Quran says that neither Muhammad says that neither the hadith says that and even their article proving that they are false same time we showed you that the Quran bring us to dating one it says that Allah he deal with the earth and the heaven in a day equal to 1000 year as we see in chapter 32 verse number five and we showed you in chapter 70 verse number four it says the opposite that the angels and the spirit scanned to him in a day in the measure were four as 50,000 years if the angels they have a fixed speed of light why here is taking them 50,000 years and there they have 1,000 year as distance same time Muhammad he received the chapter of Al-Fatiha today let's just say as long the angels is going to take them 1,000 years to go up and 1,000 years to come down that's mean in order for Muhammad to receive the second verse the angels have to take them 2,000 years after they deliver the first verse how Muhammad received the Quran then any Muslim can tell us when you say to me that the Quran says not me saying that the angels they take the command from Allah as we see in the article read and laugh with me Allah rules okay what does that mean the command of Allah is given to the angels and the angels will travel to do the command of Allah and it take them 1000 years to come to the earth and by the way here you will see in the translation they say in a distance of one day in the in the verse in the Quran it doesn't say the word distance at all that is a fabrication chapter 32 verse number 5 let us let us change the translator from the article to the to the website we are using 32 5 just to show you how the Muslims they fabricate and we cannot accept their translation they always they make a translation fit with the article they are making to prove a point so they add words to the translation to make it about distance to make it about speed to make it about things is not there here we go this is verse number five where is the distance here he add the word space even there, there's no space. The Arabic in the front of us, it says, 
يدبر الأمر من السماء إلى الأرض ثم يعرج إليه في يوم كان مقداره ألف سنة مما تعدون He rules the affair from the heaven to the earth which means from the direction is from the heaven down to the earth and then they go back to him in a day which is equal to 1000 year of your time that's it doesn't say anything about speed doesn't say anything about distance it doesn't say anything all what it says that the angels they go down to earth to do the command of Allah in one day for Allah 1000 years for us so here Muhammad he received a verse from Allah why Muhammad he received a verse second day if the angels they need a thousand years 1000 years to go 1000 years to come back any Muslim Hello, who is a Muslim? Want to give us a call? So, all what we see in the Muslim articles is a change of translation, change of interpretation, adding words to the Quran to make it scientifically look like we change the translator. It says, He regulates the affair from the heaven to the earth, then shall its skin day to him in a day the measure of it which is a thousand years of your count there's no distance there's no speed there's only time and we cannot measure the speed unless we know two things at least if we know the distance and we know the time we can know the speed if we know the speed and we know the distance we can know the time correct i mean it's a simple mathematics but here all what we know is the time how many of you is good in mathematics so they lie and they fabricate and they add things is not even exist there let us see different different fabricated miracle vision let us take one by one vision a mysterious syndrome has been imp 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 impairing astronomist vision on the international space station causing and treatable uh, okay all right okay i'm not going to read the whole article you read it guys but let's go to the crawl but 1400 years ago the Quran said if Allah opened war hole wormhole the Quran says Allah opened wormhole okay <laughs> read the translation with me and love even if we Allah open upon them from the heaven a door that they and they continued passing through if they would say our sight is intoxicated rather we have been bewitched so they say to you that if you stay in the heaven in the spaceship you have a burly is a vision your vision is not going to be good your vision is going to be disturbed and they say to you look allah in the quran says when we open for them the door of the sky and they are going up to the sky they will say look like as if we are drunk and we don't see good we think we are and they're black magic read carefully what the muslim they say here sakarat in arabic mean getting drunk dizziness gnosis and pearl of vision are common symptoms of getting drunk today we know 
that astronomers expire dozens and noses per vision. Okay, hold on. If we go to the Quran and see the verses they are talking about, and we try to find out what the verse is talking about, all of us we will die laughing at the, at the fiction of the Muslim try to create. Chapter 15, verse number 14 and 15. Let us go. All right. The same chapter they choose for us to speak about miraculous of pearly vision is speaking about something totally different. Read carefully with me, and I change any Muslim to say, I am lying. The one Allah is talking about is those who make fun of Islam, not those who go to heaven. Read carefully. We have sent without we, we and we have without doubt sent down the message and we will assuredly guard it from corruption. But we know that the goat ate the Quran and we know uh, Omar, he said the, uh, the Quran was a million, million, 27,000 letter and not even 20% or 30% of the Quran is left. We did send messengers before the amongst religious sect of old. But never came a messenger of to them, but they mocked him. Even so, we do let it creep into the heart of the sinners. They should not believe in the message, but the ways of the ancient have passed away. Even if we open out for to them a gate from heaven, and they were to be continue all day ascending therein. They would only say our eyes have been open in text like uh, uh, to be drunk. Nay, we have been witch, bewitched and sorcery. So all what he's saying, even if we take them to heaven, they will not believe it. All what this verse is about. The Muslim they make it about when you go in the spaceship, you have a pearly vision. But hold on, the Quran itself says, if we continue reading the same chapter. You will see how stupid things will go. They are talking about if you go in the spaceship, you will have a burly vision. Read with me carefully. It is we who have set the zodiacal signs in the heaven. So the God of Islam believe in zodiac signs. Do you see it? This is a spaceship now. The zodiac signs, Allah saying, I am the one who put them in the heaven. Continue. And we made them decoration for the beholder. So the God of Islam believe that the stars are decoration only, which means all the stars can be seen. The fact not even one of billion percent of the stars can be seen by eye. The rest are invisible for our eyes because they are too far. Then, وَحَفَظْنَاهَا مِنْ كُلِّ شَيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ and moreover, we have guarded them from every cursed devil. Hold on. The Muslim, they were talking about spaceship going to the space, but the Quran says nobody can go there because the space is guarded. Shaitan cannot go there, and even a human being cannot go there. But if any sign, any, gains a hearing by steel to, is pursued by a flaming fire. So if any Shaitan tried to go to the space, Allah will shoot him by a star. Do you see the, the science? If a shaitan, he tried to go to the space, Allah will shoot him by the fire. And that story can be confirmed in different verses in the Quran. Read carefully with me. You see how they try to, to speak about the spaceship? Allah protect the spaceship those who go in the space they will have a they, they will have a pearly vision in chapter 67 verse number five it says he is the one who created seven heavens one above one 
to see no incorrectly the creation of the beneficent Allah then he look again can we see the disorder then he turned back the eye again and again you look your look shall come back to you confused while you are fat fatigued I mean the translation is really horrible and certainly we have adorned the lowest heaven with lamps and we have made such a lamps as missiles for shaitan and we have a prepared for them what the verse in here saying that the lamps are created to shoot the shaitan in his ass but the guys in the article talking about science and a spaceship not only this we are not done not only this in different verse in the Quran we will find the following we will keep going the Lord of the heaven and the earth and what is between them the Lord of the East surely we have adorned the, ne the nearest heaven with adorn adornment a star and there is safeguards against every rebellious shaitan they cannot listen to exalted assembly and they are thrown at from every side being driven away for them is a part perpetual just made except him who snatches off but once then they follow him a brightly shining flame horrible translation i will change it but as you see the quran the muslim they speak about science the quran is speaking that there is genies and shaitan they spy at allah and that how allah explained the fallen meteor he think that those are stars they are made to shoot the shaitan who try to spy at allah they are coming to Allah to spy at Allah. Allah have a meeting with the angels. He's giving them commands. So the shaitan go there trying to spy, but he cannot. Because the second he tried to go there, Allah, he showed them. We are not done yet. Hello? Hello, good evening. Yes, my friend. We hear you. Hello, yeah. My name is Mr. Jana Degwa. All right, how I can help you? Ah, uh, you know me now. Why you ask me that question? Sorry? Help me as well. So, don't you remember me? No, I do not know you. Who are you? I don't think we are unable to finish our discussion. Uh, I don't say again what I said last week I was connected to you. Oh, uh, you are are you are you the one who called himself Ustaz? By your first talk. Yeah, 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 yeah. How are you, Ustaz? How are you doing? You, why did you block my boy today? I, today I blocked what? Latif. Hello? You blocked Latif Hassan. Because he's a kid. He said he don't accept the hadith. Do you accept the hadith or not? I told you that day. I ask you, I'm asking you, don't change the topic. Don't shut up. You're asking me why you block this guy. This guy, he play game. He claimed first, he claimed first, he claimed first that he don't accept hadith. Do you agree that a Muslim can be a Muslim without accepting hadith? Yes or no? I just, I will do the accepted. It has not contradict the Quran. No, my friend, he did not say that. He said he don't accept the hadith. Anyone, he don't said. He said I don't accept the hadith. He did tell you that. Okay. Okay. Let me ask you. Okay. Let me ask you. As long it does not contradict the Quran, I will go with you. You're a prophet. He said the sun set in the murky water. Do you agree with that hadith? Is that what? You're a prophet. He said the sun set in the murky water. Can you show me the truth in the Quran? 
show you the verse in the Quran? The traces of the verse in the Quran here. All right, no problem. <clears throat> Do you see my screen with me? No, 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 no. Okay, no. chapter 18, verse number 86. Read it for us. I'm on YouTube. I'm on Facebook. All right, chapter eight, chapter 18, you. chapter 18, verse number 86. <laughs> Chapter 18. Yes. That's number what? Hmm? That's number what? 86. 86. 86. Don't always run away from the... Sorry? Hello? Yeah. Why do you always run away from the Bible? Don't change the topic. Let's, let's finish what we are talking about. Read the verse. I said, why do you always run away from quoting the Bible? My friend, nobody is running are away. You, you are the one is running away from the quoting the Quran right now. You are the one is running away from quoting the Quran. You ask me, you ask me where it says the sun set in the murky water. I gave you the verse, and now you are running away, changing the topic. It is you who is running away. Read the verse for me. I will read the verse on. Okay, go ahead. Nobody is running away, and I will show. I will get you busted. You can you can quote for me from the Bible as much as you want. You can quote from the Bible as much as you want. Read the verse for me. Read the verse for me. We are waiting for you, my friend. Go ahead. Now, let me take it from verse eighty-three. Okay. So you give me time sure, to explain myself. We are reading. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Now, the Quran said from Allah, not Muhammad said, Quran said, they ask you concerning your name. Hmm. They ask you Muhammad. Allah said Muhammad that they ask you about Duluk on him. Hmm. Say, tell them, I will re ask you something of his story. Tell them that God will tell me about Zulkarnain. Okay, who is Zulkarnain? Who is Zulkarnain? And the means My friend, do you, do you hear me? Do you hear me? Do you hear me? Who, who is Zulkarnain? Who is who is this guy? Who is this, who is this guy? Before you continue, before you continue, I'm, I'm letting you read in. I'm letting you read in. It's okay. It's okay. We can stop for a second. Tell me who is this guy first. Who is Zulkarnain? Let me finish. Who is Zulkarnain? Who is Zulkarnain? If you don't mind. So you do not know who is Zulkarnain. Is that the answer? You, do you know who is Zulkarnain or you do not know? Let me read to the end. Okay. But you promise me you will tell me who is Zulkarnain, right? I said, please. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Now. Now said, surely we established his power hmm. on earth. Okay. And we gave him the ways, hmm. means to all things. Hmm. 85. Hmm. One such way he followed, hmm. 86, until he reached the city of the sun. He found it set in a spring of murky water. Hmm. Yeah, of Near it, he found the people. We said, "Don't call in. We are you have authority either to punish them or to treat them with kindness." Hmm. He said, "Whoever does wrong, him shall we punish. Then shall he be sent back to his lord, and he will punish him with a punishment unheard of before." But whoever believes and work righteousness, he shall have a goodly reward, and easy will be his task as we order it by our command. So what are you asking me? And my, fr my, my friend, you are very funny. I asked you why your God, he yes. said, I ask you where your God said the, the the water sit in the murky water. So you read the whole chapter, and now you're asking me what what I'm asking you. So I was asking you two questions now because you are the one who started in from verse. Let me tell you what I'm asking you. Don't don't cut me. You see, you asked me to let you finish, and now you said to me, "What are you asking me?" Let me tell you what I'm asking you. First of all, who is Zulkarnain? Number two, how your God say that the sun sit in the murky water? 
The mic is yours. Who is Al Qurnayn? And how the sun sits in the murky water? Go ahead. is a messenger of God. Who is he? Who is he? The one that a messenger of God. Who is he? Who is he? Where he was? What what is his language? What is his location? What his name? Who is he? I don't I don't know his location. Okay, do you know what Al Qurnayn means? Do you know what Al Qurnayn means? Do you know what Al Qurnayn means? Al yeah, what Al Qurnayn mean? Show me the Quran, the meaning. I'm asking you, you are the scholar, you call yourself Ustaz. So let us say, no, I, am a, I am a person, I am a person from Nigeria, I'm a person from Nigeria, and you are the Ustaz. So if you one of your students call you Mr. Ustaz, which means you claim to be a teacher, who is Al Qurnayn and what Al Qurnayn mean? What you will say to him? I've called you Dr. is a messenger of God. Who is he? Who is he? We got he is a messenger of God. He, he in which nation, what language, what his name? Zulkarnain. Do you know what Zulkarnain mean? Mean of what? What what Zulkarnain mean in the mean in Arabic? What Zulkarnain mean? I don't know. You do not know, so you call yourself Ustaz Zulkarnain, me and the guy with the two horns. Let me teach you the one you call yourself Ustaz, which means you call yourself teacher and master. Zulkarnain, Zul let me answer you. Let me answer you, Nigerian boy. Boy, boy, you are no Ustaz, you know nothing. You just said, I do not know. So let me teach you. Zulkarnain in Arabic, shut up. Let me answer you. Zulkarnain, shut up. Let me talk. You do not know. You just said you do not know. Zulkarnain, Zulkarnain, me. Zul, let me talk, man. You don't act like a kid. You said you do not know. I know. Zulkarnain me, the guy with the two horn. Why he was called the guy with the two horn? Do you know? Where is it in the Quran? It's in here in front of you. Zulkarnain. This is what Qurnain mean. The guy with the two horn. Here in the Quran that the meaning it's in the front of you, you idiot. This is what the word mean in Arabic. Zul <laughs> this is what Al Qurnain mean. This is what Al Qurnain mean. I said where in the Quran you find the meaning of my the friend, Quran. my friend. This is the this is the Arabic word. The Qurnain mean two horn. Are you stupid or what? In Arabic, the word yeah. Qur'an, don't tell me what is the meaning. This is what it says, the Qur'an says. The Qur'an says, the guy with the two horns. This is not a name, you idiot. You see, you claim to be you claim to be a teacher, but you are a certified liar. Al-Qur'an in Arabic. Okay, let me show you. If I show you... <laughs> what Al-Qur'an mean? I'm asking you, you claim to be a teacher. What Al-Qur'an mean? From the Arab word, mm -hmm. yeah, and what the word yeah, means, is an Arab word? and what the word mean mean two horn, correct? Is it an Arab man? Yes. How do you decide? Otherwise, yeah, hold on. Arabic. It is an Arabic word. I don't care what it's an Arab. Is an Arab man or not? The word is Zulkarnain, mean the guy with the two horn. Yes or no? Abdul, Abdul, listen, Abdul. I'm asking you now. I'm, I'm asking you. Shut up, you coward. Why? Why? Why Allah call him the guy with the two horn? Do you have an answer? I said you are a liar. Tukonil was never an Arab, Arab man. I am not saying he's an Arab. This, this is Alexander the Great, you idiot. This is Alexander the Great, you donkey. This is Alexander the Great. This is not an Arab. I am not saying he's an Arab. I am saying the Qur'an is an Arabic word. Stop, donkey. Listen, listen, donkey. Ustaz, Ustaz, donkey. Listen, the Qur'an. Okay, let me get you busted. Let me get you busted. What interpretation do you like me to read for you? What? Who? I said, is an Arab man? No, this is Alexander the Great. You telling me now Dukonin means man with two horns in Arab world. I said in Arabic the word Qurnain mean the guy Dhul Qurnain mean the guy with the two horn. You are a liar. You are a liar. I, I am a liar? Okay, I challenge you. Which interpretation you like me to read for you? What interpretation you like me to read for you? It's not an Arab word. I, I ask you, what is the interpretation you like me to read for you? I'm asking, Abdul, what's wrong with you? Why you, are, why you are scared? What interpretation you like me? What, inter what interpretation you like me to read for you? Stop, stop playing games. Hello, 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 hello. 
you don't even know what I'm talking about. I ask a question. Is who can name an Arab man? He said, no. You are not given Arab meaning. To what you don't want. Abdul, is the Quran in Arabic or it's in the Greek? He said what? Is the is the Quran written in Arabic or written in Greek? It's Arabic. Okay. Is the Quran is the Quran a name? Is the Quran is a name or description? Is the Quran shut up? Is the Quran shut up? Is the Quran a name or description? Shut up. Let me talk. Now, the Quran is as look at Abraham. Abraham was a Greek. Don't change the topic, Abdul. Don't change the topic. Is the Quran a name? Is the Quran a name or description? Is the Quran is the Quran a name or description? The Quran was not an Arab man, as you know it. The name was coined from its original name to Arab man. So if you are the original name of Quran, okay, hold on, hold on. I want to ask you. You claim you claim to be Ustaz. What is the reference of what you are saying that Zul Quran is the name of the guy? Thank you. I don't. I said Zul name was coined from his original name, unlike Abraham. Abdul, Abdul, when you mention something to me, you, when you mention something to me, I, I would like you to give me a reference. Where is the reference of what you just said? Can you give me a reference? Thank you. Thank you. In the, in the Bible, or in the book of Moses, Abraham was a prophet of God. So, being of Abraham, we know to the Hebrews. Ibrahim is the coined one in Arab world. Abraham was never an Arab man. Abdul, Moses are you stupid or what? Why you are changing the topic? What Abraham have to do with our Quran? Stop being a liar. Let me get you busted. Let me get you busted. This is Tafsir at Tabari. Everybody will laugh at you. You call me. You you call me. You asking your destiny to be destroyed. Here we go. This is shut up, shut up, you idiot. This is Tafsir at Tabari. Zul Quran is a guy who is a guy with the two horn. Shut up, shut up, potato. Coward, read with me and laugh. Big mouth, coward. Listen, coward. If you if you want to talk to me, if you want to talk to me, you should let me talk. If you will not let me talk, we cannot talk. Do you agree? Do you agree to let me talk or not? Do you agree to let me talk or not? This is Tafsir at Tabari. This is Tafsir at Tabari is going to show everybody that you are a certified donkey. Read it for me. I challenge you. I gave you the link. I gave you the link. It's in your sky. Open it and read it. You do not know Arabic. You are a liar. And this is at Tabari saying that Zul was given that was was given that description because they beat him twice in his head. Read it. Read it. Read it. Read it. You coward. Why you don't read it? Okay, read it for us. Read at Tabari. No, read at Tabari for me. Do you know how to read Arabic? 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 I'm on Facebook Live. I don't care. Do you know how to read Arabic? Read it. So that's why I said I can't see what you're reading. Read the Tafsir at Tabari for the verse. Read Tafsir at Tabari. This is no, Tafsir at Tafsir at Tabari. I love Mr. Fu. I don't allow Tafsir. Tafsir is the perception of the writer. Oh, so, so Tafsir, okay, okay, let us make it clear. So you agree that the Muslim Tafsir, all of it agree with me, and you are the only one who have his own Tafsir. And because that is the only, you know, bad day. So let me ask you, let me ask you, if there is one Tafsir agree with your donkey, is, is there is one Tafsir in the world agree with you, Mr. Donkey Ustaz? You are, you are a fool. If there, is, if there is one tafsir agree with you, are you saying to me that all Muslim scholars agree with me, but not even one scholar agree with you? <laughs> I want you, you, you claim to be a stars. When, when somebody says he's a stars, you have to give reference. Okay, where you are giving me your, 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 your interpretation? Are you giving me your own interpretation? Obviously, yes. Your scholars, they say that this guy he was called the man with the two horn because they hit him in his head first time he invited them to Easter. And he got the pimple in his head. It's called a horn. You told me about your question. Was just to show 
<laughs> okay, Abdul. So the interpretation, the interpretation agree with me. Abdul, listen. Abdul, potato. Potato, stop, stop. Jesus was sent to the whole world. Get lost, donkey. Let your mama call me. And you say to me, why I, I black them? Here we go. I will black you too. You don't let me talk. You don't change the topic. You are a coward. You are a potato. You do not know how to speak Arabic. And you don't agree with your scholars. And now you claim that you have your own interpretation. And you claim that Zul Qurnayn is a name. And not even a single Muslim in the world agree with that. Zul Qurnayn, this is what Arabic means. The man with the two horns. You are a certified donkey trying to fool, scam the Nigerian people. We talk about Zulkarnain, he start talking about Abraham. We talk about the sun sitting in murky water, he start talking about Jesus. Potato, potato. So you say to me, why you block that idiot? He, he's idiot like you, liar like you. He said he don't accept the hadith. Not hadith contradict the Quran. And by the way, all the hadith contradict the Quran. Because the Quran contradict itself. However, if we show you a hadith not contradicting the Quran, you don't accept it. If we show you a hadith contradict the Quran, still you accept it as an example. Muta. The Quran says you do muta. The hadith says don't do muta. You say to us you don't accept the hadith, contradict the Quran. There is tons of rules are abrogated in Islam. It is in the hadith, not in the Quran, which means this is a contradiction for the Quran. Stupidity. Now, if we go back where he refused to read for us, and you see, he asked me to read 10 verses before and 10 verses after, but he did not answer the question how Zulkarnain, the guy with the two horn, found the sun setting in murky water. Do you see it? I mean, who cares even about the name of the Zulkarnain? But I'm not going to talk to you because you shout a lot. I noticed that those Nigerian Muslims, they have big mouth. They say nothing. They are foolish. They will not let you talk. And they are like a talking machine, blah, 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 blah. And they, see, they say things which is against their cult. When I say something, I show reference. I put it on the screen. Everybody read with me. I say Zulkarnain is a guy who got hit in his head first time. And he killed he was killed and he got the first horn and then he came to invite his people again to Islam they hit him again in his head and he got the second horn Zulkarnain as a word in Arabic mean the guy with the two horn it's not a name you eat the donkey this is tafsir al tabari it says the following. جئتم تسألوني عن القرنين وما تجدونه في كتبكم كان شاب من الروم فجاء فبنى مدينة مصر مدينة مصر الإسكندرية. You are coming to me to ask me about the guy with the two horn and what is in your books. He was a young man from the Roman and he came and he built a city in Egypt. It's called Alexandria. And when he finished, an angel came to him and he took him up to the sky. And he said to him, what do you see? He says, I, I, see, I see my city and many cities. And then he took him up more. And he said to him, what do you see? He says, I see my city. And then he took him up more. He said, what do you see? He say, I saw, I see the earth. And this is the ocean. And then he says, Allah he sent me to you to teach the ignorant and to fix the knowledge and uh, 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 and then he came he came with him until he found a dam between two mountains and those mountains are lousy they are like they fell in, in the top of each other and he and he walked with him until he found Gog and Magog and then he walked with him into other nation and their faces is the faces of dogs. They are fighting the people of Gog and Magog. And then he took him more until he walked with him to other nation. They were fighting each other. 
and their faces are faces of dogs and then he found uh, he took him to other nations etc etc so when we say something like this we, we we prove it we don't make things up you claim to be an ustaz ustaz mean master teacher shame on you self claim you do not know Arabic you don't speak Arabic you cannot read uh, your own books and you claim knowledge we ask you a simple question who is the Quran you do not know you do not know If I call this guy again, do you think, guys, he will give us the answer or he will shout, scream, non stop? He will shout, scream. They will never answer because he knew he had no knowledge. Let us laugh. Did you hear the interpretation I was reading for you? Is that it? Why did you block me initially? Did you read the interpretation I was reading for you? Abdul? Why you block me? Are you there? Are you there? Why did you block me? Why did you block me? No, you, you are not allowing me to read. I have to stop you so I can read for you. I was reading for you. So did you did you did you see my reading? I don't even see it. Okay, now I want you to read for me the interpretation I gave you, please. Which one? I, I gave it to you in Skype. Get, open the link and read it, please. I don't have. I don't have it here. I'm you not with my phone. You don't have Arabic in your phone, so do you know Arabic? I don't have my phone with me. Okay, I'm asking you. Do, do you I'm asking you. Do, do you know Arabic? Do you know Ar my friend? I'm asking you. Do you know Arabic? He hang up. <laughs> he don't know Arabic. He is teaching Islam and he claimed that he is a master in Islam, but he do not know Arabic. Let me call him again. <laughs> he's, he's, he's hanging up on me. <laughs> the second I said to him, do you know Arabic? Insist to know Arabic? He hang up because he, this is very embarrassing. His guy, he is making himself equal to Zakir Naik. Zakir Naik do not know Arabic. Didad do not know Arabic and this donkey do not know Arabic. And yet they claim to be scholars. How in the world you claim to be a scholar, but you do not know Arabic? How you can read your books? And you see now I am calling him. He is hanging up the coward. Very embarrassing. See, he's hanging up. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Ustaz. Ustaz, my, uh, as they say, what a potato. What a coward. What's the Kurnain mean? Is the Kurnain al Arab? No, he's not. He's Alexander the Great, you idiot. And how your God, he made Alexander the Great, who is a bisexual, a prophet of God. Alexander the Great is a bisexual. Allah, he chose a bisexual to be a prophet of Allah. And he found the sun set in the murky water. Isn't this is amazing? <clears throat> Let us see, we have some callers from Nigeria. <coughs> <coughs> Who is next? Okay, call me, call me, Nigerian guy. You will see here in front of me, it says. Haddathana ibn Hamid, qala thana hakam, blah, 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 blah. It says, from, 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 it says. 
he ordered them to uh, uh, to fear Allah Zulqarnain he ordered his people to fear Allah and they did hit him in his head in the side of his head and they killed him and then Allah he made him come up again and they did hit him in the other horn and he died this is why he was called the guy with the two horn here it says so he invited them to worship Allah they hit him in his horn and he died and Allah brought him back again to life and then he invited his people again to Allah and they hit him again in his horn and he died and this is why he was called the guy with the two horn <laughs> <laughs> oh boy chat only I don't chat only sorry you want to talk to me call me I don't do chat what don't waste my time let us call the the, the ustaz answer potato answer coward he will not answer see that's it he called me back he thought maybe he can you know gambling the guy he called me before we made him shish kebab and now he tried to retra retain the owner which was dismissed all over the floor so he said maybe if i call him now maybe i can more lucky but he noticed right away that he have no luck he's being stupid this is how they make money from you they claim to be people of knowledge but they cannot read two sentences from their book What Zulqarnain mean? He do not know. He think it's a name, the idiot. He think it is a name. What a donkey you are. Now we go back to our topic. As you see Zulqarnain, he found the sun sitting in the murky water while the Muslims in their article are speaking about the pearly vision. The Quran says that Allah it challenged <coughs> mankind Chance. Answer, I'll do answer. <laughs> answer, Allah will help you. Come on. Stars. <laughs> answer potato all right so as you see the Quran is full of garbage and the Muslim they try to say to us in the Quran even is speaking about when you go in this space you would have difficulty with your vision but this is not what the Quran is speaking about the Quran was talking if we try even to take them to heaven they will say we are drunk we don't believe it Suddenly it became about spaceship when the Quran even challenged anyone to go to the space. Isn't it the Quran says, none of you can go to the space? Isn't it Allah he challenged mankind and genie to go to the space? <clears throat> Let us see. In chapter 55 verse number 33 Allah challenged mankind and genie both together to leave the zone of the earth and if you try look what Allah will do to you read with me carefully oh company of jinn and man if you have power to penetrate all the region of the heaven and the earth then penetrate them but you will never be able to do so and Saved by our sanctions. If you go and see what the sanctions, they will say only angels and prophet of God they can go through. If you are not an angel, which means not including the sanctions, Allah will shoot your ass. There will be sent against you both. 
both who mankind and genie who try to go out of the zone of the earth a fire and the flesh of brass and you will not escape do you see it this is what Islam is about the Quran deny and says nobody can leave to the space and if you try to leave the space Allah will shoot you so what the Muslim talking about the speed of light spaceship if you go in the space you will have a difficulty with your vision all this fabrication when the Quran obviously is nothing but a fairy tale book the same as we asked this guy who claimed to be Ustaz about Zul Qurnayn, who found the sun set in the murky water. Your God did not even know where the sun set. The sun doesn't set anywhere. When we asked this guy, he said we refuse hadith if it is contradict the Quran. Well, the Quran said the sun set in the murky water. And the hadith confirmed that until he reached the sitting of the sun reach where the sitting of the sun how in the world can a person reach the sun, sitting of sun how in the world I can reach that I do not need to go anywhere to reach the sin the southern sitting of the sun because this the sun set everywhere so in order to understand until he reached the sun sitting place he have to be going to a place where the sun set which is a location and then he found it Allah is stating a fact what he found the one is talking here by the way is Allah not the guy who is called Zul Qurnayn, the man with a two horn he found it sitting in a spring of murky water let us see what Muhammad he say about that. Do Muhammad confirm that the sun set in the murky water? Absolutely. Read it. <clears throat> I was sitting behind Allah Messenger, or Messenger of Allah, who was riding and a donkey while the sun setting he asked do you know where this set which means the sun I replied Allah and his apostle know better so Muhammad have knowledge of Allah he said it's set in a spring of warm water and here they quote the Arabic word Hamia which actually boiling water actually this is why it's murky because it's boiling is this hadith is weak? Absolutely not. Sahih. Is that a contradiction for the Quran? Absolutely not. So the story confirmed twice. Once explained by the, the Ustaz Muhammad, the one who called himself Prophet, and one explained by the Quran, Ustaz Allah. And now we got Ustaz Nigerian boy busted who claimed to be a person who have knowledge. He don't speak Arabic, he do not know Arabic, he cannot read Arabic, yet he is teaching about Allah and the religion of Allah. And look how many times I tried to call him, he will not answer. He actually he went offline now to save his ass from more embarrassment. And by the way, the reason he called because all the Muslims in his page they are accusing accusing him that he is you know he's getting paid by me. Muslims they are saying that he is a fake person, he cannot be a Muslim. People they are saying to me that this guy you brought is a fake scholar, he is not a Muslim. Now everybody is watching and all the Muslim they can judge which one of us is telling the truth. I said Zulqarnain mean the man with the two horn. He said it's a name. 
<laughs> His father he called him the guy with the two horn. Hey two horn boy, come here. Hmm? Actually, I saw a Chinese movie that a kid he have a horn in his head, and when he hit him in his head, he turned like like to be like the devil. <laughs> And look of them the one before him he claimed that he speak Arabic when we gave him Arabic he refused to read he cannot see it no more this guy we ask him do you know Arabic he hang up the second we start asking him I insist if he know Arabic I want an answer he hang up because if he say I don't this is very embarrassing So do you see how they fabricate and they say miraculous Quran until now did you see anything here miraculous this is the most stupid book not only that if you if you continue the story you will see here he found where the Sun rise too not only where the Sun set until so he, he changed the direction after that and then he went until when he came to the rising of the Sun the rising place of the Sun and he found it rising on people who for whom had no prov provide no covering He found the rising place of the sun. Are you sure? Where is that location? Any Muslim tell me where is the rising place of the sun? Any smart Muslim, he have an answer. The miraculous Quran. And not only that, after he arrived where the sun rise, he found people there, and they are fighting with creatures. They are called people of Gog and Magog, which is not a human. Gog and Magog, they are creatures who they sleep inside their ears. Their right ear is so big like a tent, so at night he covered himself, he warped himself by his ear, and he sleep inside his ear. It's like a tent so those people they ask Zulkarnain the man with the two horn uh, uh, to build a dam between them and Zulkarnain and, and uh, Gog and Magog and until now people of Gog and Magog they are trying to open a space so they can penetrate in and invade the earth is Gog and Magog is a fiction or a true story <clears throat> hmm? Any Muslim? If I show you the story of Gog and Magog from the mouth of Muhammad, you will die laughing. Let us search for some stories about Gog and Magog. The Prophet said, Today, Today, the wall, the barrier of Gog and Magog has been opened so much. Oops, oops. <laughs> Me, that's very dangerous. If Gog and Magog is able to open that wall, they will invade all the way to Mecca. They will control the whole earth. And Muhammad, he made a false prophecy that the whole of Gog and Magog today open too much. And by the way, it's not even a wall. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a dam. Dam built by iron. Where we can find this dam? 
and how those people they are trillions of time by numbers more than the human being we cannot find them we can't even find one of them the prophet said a hole has been opened in the dam of Gog and Mago and he made the number 90 with his fingers Ooh. which which is like a small size this is a big hole that's dangerous you see it Gog and Mago Muhammad here is making a prophecy he said Today an opening of the size of this size and he made small in his finger size been made uh, in the barrier restraining Guga wa Magug or Juja wa Majuj and the PBUH made a circle with his thumb the index finger I said oh Allah messenger shall we perish while still there will be righteous people among us the prophet said yes when wickedness prevail <laughs> you are the master of wickedness the muslim will use the bows and arrows and shield of gog and magog as firewood for seven years muslims did you use it Gog and Magog, they are using arrows and shield. Did you really use it? False prophecy. Hmm. <clears throat> Look how much fiction Muhammad, he learned stories from the Jews and people around him and he add them to his books and then he promote them to scare people with fictions. And actually, Gog and Magog is one of the signs of Judgment Day, as you see. All those speaking about Gog and Magog. Any Abdul? Hello. Yes. Yeah, just come on your show just to discuss uh, about Islam. All right. So you're a Muslim, my friend. Yeah, I'm a Muslim. Yeah. Okay. What do you think about the Muslim? They claim that Quran is full of miraculous stuff. Yeah, that's true. Like what? There's many things. Like, for example, in the time of the, in the time of the, the Prophet um, no one knew about you know, the, you know, in the Quran is mentioned about uh, embryology. So, in the the way our baby looks in the stomach of our mother, okay. Uh, can you give me a, can you without give me science, a you won't know. No um, can you give me a verse so we can take a look at it, please? Yeah, just one moment. No problem. <coughs> pull it up one minute. Do you, do you want me to help you? I can help you. Go to chapter 23, verse number 14. Yeah. Okay. So this is the one you are looking for, right? Yeah, that's the one, yeah. Okay. So read it for us, please. What it says. Which one? Chapter 23, verse 14. You said this is the one you are looking for. 
Yeah, so he says that Thumma uh, Khalaqna Nutfa. So he created the um, sperm drop, mm-hmm. and then it was, the sperm drop was uh, yeah. So he made a sperm into a clot of congealed blood. Then mm-hmm. of that clot, we made a uh, lump. Then we mm-hmm. made out of that lump bones and clothed the bone and rid flesh. Mm-hmm. Then we de- uh, developed out mm-hmm. of it another cre- uh, creature. Um, so blessed be Allah, the best of, best to create mm-hmm. to, to best to create. Mm-hmm. So this is the, this is the science now. This is science for you. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely science. Oh. The way Allah, the way Allah described it uh, of um, of the what do you call it, the lump in the in the mother's belly. The way it was exactly perfect as, as perfect. Each. So according to you, science agree that the sperm became a blood. Um, into a clot of congelia, yeah, that's right. Hmm. What, what science says that? Can you show me any reference? Uh, no, I don't have a reference to so how, how you know that this is what the science says. I mean, this is this is not smart because the sperm will not transform to be a dead blood, congealed blood is dead blood, and dead blood is dead blood. That's it, doesn't grow, doesn't do anything, is dead. No, there's other reasons. This is just one of them, um, which I point out. Obviously, I don't, I don't know full uh, details about this, but there's many reasons why the Quran is uh, miraculous. Well, but you are the one who chose this one for me. Remember, it's not me who chose it for you. So yeah, yeah, that's fine. I can choose. Okay, uh, so one. yeah, I mean, so I, so do you agree now? This one is a lie. Is not true. No, I need to uh, do more research on it. Okay, but hold on. Forget about the sperm transform into a congealed blood, which is very funny. Then it says. That the clot became a lump, and then the lump became bones, and then we closed the bones with the flesh. So, do you think really that Allah He made you as bones, and then at the end He clothed you with the flesh? Do you agree with that? It was a process how it how it was. So it was a lump, then bones, and then there was um... Just one moment. If you want to ask like for help or to call a friend, it's okay. Yeah, could you say that again? I'll just call okay. it busy. So according to the verse, according to the verse, I don't know if you can see my screen. Allah, he made you like this. And then at the end, he cover you with the flesh. Do you agree with that? Yeah, I agree with that, yeah. So the, the way the way it was done, um, but I don't know too much detail about that. So I'd rather go to a different topic. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I know, but you are the one who chose it. But I mean, this is very funny because how he said that he made you bones, and then after that he clo- he closed you with the flesh. <laughs> what is the heart? Where is the? So now we we are just bones. So you Muslims, you copy paste. They told you that the embryology in the Quran, embryology in the Quran, is amazing, etc. It's just the most silly, stupid thing ever. Okay, I will give you a chance to change the topic. Give me something else. Forget about this one. So this one looked like it is Allah was wrong, and Allah cannot be God. Now, give me something else. The preservation of the Quran. Preservation so the of the Quran. The the... That's wonderful. How the Quran was preserved. So the way the Quran preserved, or uh, you know, for generations, mass transmission. So the Quran came down uh, in tra- mass transmission, and uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, n- normally you would expect mass transmission to um, there should be an error in it, but, but because uh, because it came from Allah, there's no error in the Quran. There's only we only have one book. We just showed you an error. What are you talking about? D- didn't we just show you in the same verse? There's at least five. That's, what, that's according to your. Five, yeah, that's no, according, that's to, your according to me. You are the one who said to me miraculous and science, and we go, we go there. This is error. Same time, the Quran was collected by Muslims, correct? Pardon? The Quran was collected by Muslims. Is that correct? Um, so yeah, it was collected by the Sahaba as a companions. Okay, uh, what is the Quran of the Sahaba? The Osmanis. Um, what, what is the uh, Quran? Of, what is the Quran of Osman? Do you have it? It's it's uh, verbally. Um, what do you call it? Um, it was memorized. So how you how you say we collected, but it's verbally memorized? What kind of what kind of collection? This collection? Why you don't have a book? Uh, 
You don't have manuscript. It's collected as well. So it's, it's, even if there wasn't, for example, just for argument's sake, if you said there's no book, uh, it's, still, um, it's still, what do you call it, preserved uh, verbally. Okay, well, how it's preserved verbally? I want you to give me the, the verses of stoning to death. Pardon? I want you to give me a verse, the one which Muhammad, he received from Allah to stone women to death for adultery. Do you have it? Uh, stone women to death. Uh, I'm not sure. Well, don't, I'm not don't, sure you don't you Muslims agree that if a man or woman they commit adultery and they are married, they have to be stoned to death? Yes. Yes. Yeah, right. Okay. This is a verse in the Quran. It was in the Quran. Where we can find it in the Quran? Um, no. I'm not sure what you're referring to. Are you, talk, are you talking about the hadith? Where it comes in the hadith? No. This is a verse. This is a verse in the Quran. Quran used to have verses of stoning to death, verses about a breastfeed for adult. Many verses are gone in the Quran. We cannot find them. And as you see, they must have been in, abrogated. In, the same verses they've been friend, abrogated. How you, how you abrogate the verse by deleting the verse from the Quran? You told me you reserve it because there's verses in the Quran. They are abrogated, but they are in the Quran still. Why you are? Why you are? And by the way, it's not abrogated because stoning to death is a practice of Muslims today. It's not abrogated. So what do you no, mean? No, the certain that? verses in the Quran, uh, what do you call it? They were the the certain verses they abrogated. The certain verses Allah can take out any time. That this is this was not uh, this is a period when the revelation was coming. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, it, it's not that we can do it now. It's it was, this was a period when Allah was okay, uh, sending you. the revelation. Did Uthman burn other Quran when he collected the Quran as you claim? Yep. Okay. How the Muslim preserved the Quran but they burned the Quran? So what he did was uh, there was uh, uh, is because the Quran c c came uh, I think it was seven dialects, mm -hmm. so the Quran came in different dialects. So mm -hmm. people were getting confused. So what he did he he, he compiled uh, all the dialects into one book, um, so it makes it it makes it easy for people. Okay. Uh, so you are then, saying so, to me, so you are saying to me, Allah he caused people confuse him by sending seven dialects, and it was a mistake. And Uthman he corrected Allah. No, nah, it was a mistake. So why they Allah, are confused then? Because they were getting confused because some people were because the new Muslims that are coming in, into Islam they were they weren't learning it enough. So, um, hmm. so, when, so well now this with, is the, a process. With, with the new with the new Quran with the new Quran of Uthman, when you say he put the seven dialect together, what does that mean? I mean, what, what does that mean? He wrote the same verse to seven times? No. No. Nah. So, what so, 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 so the way you wrote the verse, you could read it in, in different ways. So it, it, the 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 zubar zayr pesh. Um, you can read it in different ways. Okay, let me ask you, what is the first chapter Muhammad he received as a prophet? The first verse or chapter? The chapter or verse is the same. The verse was uh, Surah, uh, Surah um, what do you call it now? Surah Alaq. Mm -hmm. Okay, is that is that now the first verse in the Quran? Yeah, that was the first verse. Okay, but now is it in the first verse in the Quran? The order uh, the prophet told the companion to order it in a different Can way. Can you show me the reference that he ordered them to do so? Uh, let me just check. I was ready I will, before. I will, I will give you 20 years. Nonetheless, um, uh, while I'm finding it, nonetheless, he was a companion of the prophet. Hmm. So he had a, he had authority to um, so compile it. And he have authority to alter the Quran. That's wonderful, guys. If he is a companion of Muhammad, if you are a friend of Muhammad, you have authority to change the Quran. That's wonderful. What no, no, he was told. He was told by the Prophet. To, where, where, um, who, okay, even I, even even if the Prophet, who is the Prophet who have the authority to change the Quran of Allah? If Allah gave it to him in such a way, who is even Muhammad to change how Allah gave it to him? Allah inspired him to. Uh, Show me where to Muhammad he says that. Way. This is a big fat lie, my friend. There's nowhere it says that. Who says what he is inspired says, by Allah? Everything, that, that everything he said, that, that the he prophet said, is inspired that by he Allah. said to Uthman, change the way the Quran is made. The Quran actually in chapter 75, verse number 17, Allah said, Inna alayna jam'uhu wa Quranahu. It is for us to collect the Quran and to recite the Quran. It is not the duty of you Muslims. Whatever the Prophet says or does is revelation. My friend, show me where your prophet said, write the Quran. The first chapter is Al Fatiha. Show me. He won't say it like that, but he will so, say that. So, so uh, you are saying to me that you Muslims, you fabricate your own Quran and you, you, you made it the way you wish. 
No, the order of the Quran has been um, uh, told by the Prophet to do show it. Show me. The Prophet by Allah. I tell you to show me where he said that. Okay, one minute. Okay. Give, Give me 15 minutes. <laughs> Give you until next year. Do you like to call uh, Sheikh Hamza or Estaz Jama'a Jama from Nigeria or Zakir Naik or anyone? What do you like to call? Call Zakir Naik if you want. <laughs> Zakir Naik, you have an answer for everything. Mm -hmm. Shall I take a nap and come back later? Yeah, take a nap. <laughs> <laughs> you are funny by the way you will not find it my friend there's no such a thing there's no such a thing Quran never been preserved it's a big fat lie the Muslims they claim <clears throat> no it's definitely preserved um, just need to find it and maybe I can send in the comment section maybe if you want show me you can send me if you have something even I will put it in the screen if you have. Muslim, they keep, you know, they, they copy paste. But all reference prove that the Quran never been preserved. Never, never. Actually, all reference says the opposite. I can show you tons of reference saying totally the opposite. <laughs> Yeah, it says here, um, the present regime of the Quran is not the work of later generations, but was ma uh, made by the Prophet under God's directions. Really? Whenever a chapter was revealed, the Prophet Sallallahu describes to whom he carefully dictated his contact and instructing them where to place his re re revelation. Mm -hmm. So what he did was when the revelation came, he, he, he told them where to put it. Okay, so you have the Quran of Muhammad or Quran of Uthman? Well, Uthman did he um, when he was in seven, when he was in the seven di dialects, he did the, he made it into one uh, book. But your prophet, he said the people cannot handle it with one dialect. Yeah, so the same people they could still read from the same book, but it wasn't confusing. So the people so were saying let us that. Make it know. clear. Same Pardon? people they need seven dialect to understand the Quran. Many nations they cannot understand from one Quran. I mean, how how funny that is. So, Arab who speak Arabic, they are in a small village, a small town is called Mecca. Still, they need seven Quran to understand the Quran. But no, no, from they, India, they, could, they could understand it. They couldn't recite it because of that uh, the tongue, the way the tongue. The what time? Arabic they are the same. The same. The same people. What are you talking about? We are Arab. We are the Arab, and we are the same people. So why we need seven Quran? If, if the Arab needs seven Quran in order to understand the Quran or to recite the Quran, a guy from Pakistan, how many Quran he need? It was it wasn't the seven. No, it wasn't the seven Qurans. It was uh, seven dialects of certain words. No, it was seven Quran. Seven dialects means seven Quran, my friend. The word is different. The whole, the whole thing is different. Let me show you. You you say to me that the Quran was preserved. That the Quran says the Quran never been preserved. And Allah, even Allah, actually Himself, He caused you to forget the Quran. Isn't it Allah in the Quran? He said. That we cause you to forget the Quran. He he did what? Cause you to forget the Quran. Yeah, yeah he caused he caused the prophet to uh, forget the Quran because Why? that was the, that was the basic uh, that's one way of obligation. Why? Because certain certain things um, they, they weren't needed, so it was taken back. But there is many verses in the Quran are not needed. Why you why Muhammad memorize them? Actually, more than eighty percent of the Quran is not needed. Read only carefully. It says, "None of our revelation we do we abrogate or cause to be forgotten, but we substitute something better or similar." What is the wisdom of that? Well, what do you mean? This, this is the way Allah wanted to do. What do you mean? It says here that He will cause you to forget to make something similar. So, what the point? So, let us let us make it simple. I will say now, I will make you eat shish kebab. Now I will make you forget what I just said to you and I will say again I will make you eat shish kebab so why I made you forget the first sentence if it's the same as the second sentence 
No, so what? Why was uh, he, he? Allah revealed a revelation for that uh, for that moment, and then he abrogated it and he replaced it with something better or something similar. So you are saying to me, okay? Did you say are you the one who said something better or similar? Did you say better or similar? Yeah, yeah, that's okay. what I said. How the Quran can be better than the Quran? It was a ruling. He's talking about the revelation, the ruling, whatever it is, the okay. ruling was. So you are saying to me that Allah. He is fixing some mistakes he did, so he is going to give us something better. So he gave us a rule, and then he noticed that those rules are stupid, so he decided to make it better. No, that's not true. So what better? What mean? happened was, so, so what he did was he he revealed the revelation, and mm. then the revelation fitted for that moment only. Mm. So then he then he, uh, for example, one of the one of the rulings, like for example, don't, um, alcohol. So one of the rulings that you talk him to the sal uh, salah with alcohol. So it was slowly by slowly, uh, uh, but the, the ruling of coming. alcohol he did not cause you to forget them. Here we go. Both of them they are in the Quran. The Quran yeah, but they were uh, the 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 verse itself was abrogated afterwards. My one friend, of the doesn't verses. matter. That's not what I'm saying to you. Here is talking about to be forgotten. What the point of making you forget something if you will make something similar or better? How is that can be? Why? He will cause you to forget. Why he want to cause you to forget? No, what I'm saying is that there is a ruling. It's, it's, it's a ruling for that time and period. That's, that's not the question. Here we go. The Quran, as an example, there's verses that praise the alcohol, saying it's a miracle of Allah. And there's verses saying that don't pray when you are drunk. And there's verses saying don't 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 drink at all, correct? Yeah. Okay, see, three of them in the Quran, Allah did not make us forget them. Allah did not delete them, but they are abrogated one abrogating the other one. No problem But here he's saying any verses we cause you to be forgotten What what is the purpose to make you forget the word of Allah if Allah he promised you to preserve the word of Allah? Doesn't matter if it's going to be valid or not anymore There's more than 80% of the Quran is not valid no more. So why he want to make us forget the Quran the, the, the verses? You have to you have to point to an example where where this um the the way the way you're saying it took place. I'm saying there was it was a situation where he revealed it and it was no no longer applicable. So then you no take my it friend, back. I just showed you example. There's verses until now in the Quran and they are not to be practiced. As an example, yeah, but to be but peaceful, if, if, Allah be choice, peaceful. If, if Allah chooses to do this, either way you could do it whatever right. so way. The Quran, you can no, the do Quran, that, do the Quran this. saying that Allah He made you forget the Quran, which means the Quran no way is preserved because according to Islam itself, according to Quran, Allah Himself caused the Quran not to be preserved by making you forget in the Quran. So now, according to this verse, there's many verses was in the Quran. Now you cannot remember it, correct? No, the, they weren't supposed to be the final revelation. So whatever Allah made forget that it wasn't meant to be for the final revelation. So the final. It doesn't matter. Uh, it doesn't matter, my friend. There is verses Allah caused you to forget. Is that true or not? Either you say yes or you say no. No, he didn't cause me. He didn't cause me to forget. Who, who caused who then? He caused the prophet to forget. So and you you get your Quran from who? Yeah, the prophet. Okay, so the Quran forget you forget it too. <laughs> So now we have Quran which is missing and Allah himself he do not know uh, uh, Or let us say he calls you to, to forget them now. Let us see if the Quran is preserved Do you know the story about the goat eating the Quran? No, what? the goat eat the Quran so then, uh, The hadith uh, that the, um, the, was it, the goat that uh, ate the, uh, the Quran piece that doesn't take anything away from uh, Islam Okay, so where is the verse of starting to death? Here we go. The goat ate it, and now we cannot find the verse. Yeah, that doesn't take anything away from Islam. Allah allowed it take, that. It take, um, you uh, you, you it? Muslim, you say to us, the Quran preserved, and there is verses of stoning to death and the breastfeed for adult ten times. We cannot find them in the Quran. They were meant to be in the Quran. It's simple as that. Well, my, not meant to be in the Quran by who? By Mrs. Goat. Mrs. Goat decide that I'm going to eat them so they will not be in the Quran no more. Otherwise, show me the verses. Show me where your prophet said, Don't write the verse of a story to death in the Quran. Show me where your God saying, Don't write the verses of a breastfeeding for adult in time in the Quran. Allah's Allah's all knowledgeable and he's all wise. So, so, so if, you if he allowed to me, that to happen. So maybe so then, maybe Allah, maybe Allah is the one who sent the goat to eat the Quran, so those verses will disappear. What do you think? 
it was meant to happen that way so that's how it happened it's, okay it's so, like, so we can say uh, Allah so we can say the goat was a messenger of Allah and the goat ate the Quran as an order of Allah no, there is no proof for that. So well, that's just okay. you know, isn't everything support. Islam is based by the the will of Allah. So you could say even the rape is by the will of Allah. Okay, so, so you, okay, but that so doesn't now make the goat. Let us focus on the goat. The goat who ate the Quran was it by the will of Allah or against the will of Allah? So Allah allowed it, allowed that thing to take place. That's what He did. So He allowed the way He allows murder to take place, even okay. though it's wrong. So now Allah allowed allowed the, allowed the goat to eat the verses, and He did not allow the Muslim to remember the verses. So, so He abrogated it. No, 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 my friends, so, no, this is not abrogated. You Muslims, until now, practice is turning to death. What are you talking about? Until now, in Islamic law, aren't you a Sunni? You are a Sunni or Shia? Uh, Sunni. Okay. Sunni and Shia, actually, both of them, they practice turning to death. So it's not abrogated. Can you can you tell me, can you recite for me the verse of turning to death? Um, don't know that. Okay. So the goat ate the Quran. Did the goat ate you too? You Muslim, you say that the Quran is preserved in our heart. And now you practice turning to death, but you don't have the law which is saying to you, practice it to death. Practice the stoning. So now, I was, I was, uh, the, the, I was uh, show me another book that's been preserved by millions, uh, by has been memorized the whole book by millions of people. Show me another book. What book? Show, show me uh, another religious textbook where it's been memorized by friend, millions of people. The Jews, the Christians, my mother, she memorized the whole Bible by heart from cover to cover. I said million of people. No problem, but you know, the, the you Muslims, you learn that from the Aramaic. The Aramaic, they sing their, their the Bible singing. They sing it all of it. They sing, they sing it. The whole Bible is a song. The whole Bible for them is a song. And Muhammad, the recitation of the Quran today is exactly what the Aramaic people how they recite the Bible. As simple as that. The, now, the, now, the Quran is, my, my is friend, such a, such a miracle friend, you okay, can make a person on, cry. On. The Quran, it, the Quran, which is preserved. Do you see in the front of you in the Hadith it says that Allah He sent order as a verse of a breast feeding for adult do you see it yes yeah, see that, yeah. okay how in the world your god if he's a true god he order a woman to give her boobs to an adult man to suck it and he is a stranger uh what are you talking about now the breast feeding for adult how your god is a true god yet he order a woman to give her breast to a stranger which is a man who is not her from her family he is not her husband to suck her nipples 10 time in different 10 days until he is satisfied what kind of god this god who preserved your book um this this a scholar said that this uh, refers to um um the milk going in a bottle instead of uh, what? uh my friend, it's, it's, it's an not, adult it's man. A... It's an adult man. Adult man. Adult man. What milk in the bottle? What? It says suckle. Do you know what suckle? Arda'i. Arda'i is not a drinking. So suckle him. And this woman, she don't even have milk. She is not that young. In order to have milk, you have to have babies. Did you have to be a woman? She deliver a child. Women, they don't have milk. Anytime you squeeze their their, their nipples, they have milk there. They are not a refrigerator. Who you open it and there's a bottle of milk and you you drink from it. It says suckle him. He didn't say give him your milk. Suckle him. It doesn't matter what suckle. Suckle your nipples. Yes. Firstly, there's no um, what do you call it? It's firstly I've been told that this is supposed to go in a bottle and that and there's no. My there's friend, no, uh, this sexual, is a lie. There's no, this there's is no, a lie. There's nothing sexual I about it. I challenge you to show me one person, one scholar. He said this is about suckling in a bottle. This is what the Muslims they try to say today because this is shameful. Uh, the scholar, I can show you a link where my friend, you show me the link. scholar, and I will get them busted in a second because your prophet explained it. Yeah, I can show you, I can show you what you call it. Um, Let me show you too. Let me show you. They are I lying can show you the explanation you. of the of the no, piece. they cannot explain it. They are liars. If you want me, show me a scholar, show me a scholar, not a link written by uh, 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 some idiot. Scholar means someone like a Tabari, Al Qurtubi, a Jalalain, Ibn Kathir. Show me, no problem. 
Show me no, a scholar. No, I'm not talking about Danish okay. scholars. So those, those are not scholars. Okay. Anyone who wrote those articles these days is just to avoid the, the scandal of Islam. They are not a scholar. They are scumbag. So if you want to show me a scholar, name a scholar. A scholar is a scholar. Those who they are exist long time ago, and all the Muslims agree with them for centuries. Suddenly, nobody want to read their books. Now, no, this is a video a prophet, on the Sunni defense. My friend, what Sunni defense? It's Sunni, Sunni, Sunni idiot. Because you're a prophet. Sunni defense. My friend, you're a prophet. He explained it. The woman, he said to the woman, suckle him. Do you know what suckle him? Do you know what the word suckle mean? Like I said to you, he's supposed to go in a glass. Um, my friend, don't tell me drinking from a bottle. At that time, even there's no bottle. Secondly, he said suckle him. Does it say the word suckle him or it says different word? I'll post the link now. Just watch don't post the link. Read for me. Does it say in the front of you, suckle him? Um, yeah, so it says so good, yeah. Okay, suckle is not drinking from the ball. In different hadith, your prophet, he said the breastfeed him. Does it say that? Says what? Breastfeed him. Um, yeah, breastfeed okay. him. So, <laughs> so what the drinking from the bar? <laughs> and this is why the woman she was going crazy. How I'm going to do breastfeeding for the guy and he's an adult man. Otherwise, Muhammad he said, Don't worry, just give him a cup of milk and he would drink it. This is what I meant. He didn't say that. She said, "How I'm going? No, from, how I'm going to breastfeed him? Is, it, and he is a grown man, huh? One interpretation goes in a cup. Sec secondly, it's not sexual because after after this takes place, um, that person becomes a uh, a relative, so false, that person can never get married. Or you can search in the internet. Like no, this is a big fat lie. There's no way. There's no Muslim scholar in the world agree that if a person suckle an adult suckle, he will become forbidden." The forbidden in Islam for but after suckling is only for an infant, not for an adult. This guy is an adult, so they are lying to you again, my friend. Yeah, anyhow. Okay, so now we notice that the Quran, which you claim is a preserved, is not a preserved. Did I actually say that the chapter of Al Ahzab used to be equal to the chapter of Al Baqarah? What was that? Say that again. Did Aisha say that the chapter of Al-Ahzab used to be equal to the chapter of Al-Baqarah? Uh, Muhammad read that before. Hmm? I read that before. Okay. I can show you a reference. Let me show you some reference. And what's the point of that? What was the point you're making? Well, the point is very simple. If the chapter of Al-Ahzab used to be equal to the chapter of Al-Baqarah, that means there's more than 200 verses are gone in one chapter alone. So when Aisha, she says such a thing, and you say to me that the Quran is preserved, that's that's a, that's, that's a very silly statement. Where is that? No, that could, that could mean, that could be anything. That could mean, if you look in, in context, you could say that that could mean um, it's been abrogated by Allah. <laughs> My friend, this is what Aisha, she said, it was, it was in the size of etc. What abrogated? This is this is what they have. This is what they have. If you let me show you. Do you know Arabic? Uh, no, no, I know some words. Some words. Okay, no problem. Read with me carefully. You can. I will give you the link. You can translate in Google. All right. It says. Uh, Qalali ibn ibn Abi Kab, etc. I ask him, what is the numbers of the verses in Al-Ahzab? He said, 27 verses or 37 verses. And he said, and if it was equal to Al-Baqarah, it was equal to Al-Baqarah, and we used to read for it in the verses of a stoning to death. I said, and what is the verses of the stoning? He said, etc. Then we go down. Let us see what Aisha she said. Uh, 
Let us see. Here we go. Ana Aisha Qalat. Aisha, she said, كان سوات الأحزاب تقرأ في زمن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ما أتي آية فلما كتب عثمان المصاحف لم يقدر منها إلا على ما هو هو الآن The أحزاب was in the time of the prophet which means until he died 200 verses when Uthman he collected his own Quran he could not collect more than what he have today what do you say about that what's the reference here we go this is the reference Al-Utqan fi ulum al-Quran by the Imam Jalal al-Din Abdul Rahman Abu Bakr al-Suyuti variant number one Page number six six two. Yeah, I don't know if that uh, if that's okay. uh, reliable. I can or give not. you, I can give you at least four to five hundred reference from Islamic books about the corruption of the Quran. That's totally incorrect. You won't be able to. I will not be able to. From uh, hadith, from Sahih hadith. Well, those are lies. You won't be able to from Sahih hadith. Okay, let us see if we can find from Sahih Hadith or not. The Hadith about the the goat ate the Quran was it Sahih or no? Yeah, that was Sahih, but I don't recall that as uh, okay. that was your interpretation, uh, okay. you know, interpolation. Okay, let us go and see if we can find in Sahih Hadith any corruption for the Quran. Now, if I show you from Sahih Hadith corruption of the Quran, what you will do? There won't be any corruption. Okay, if I if I find you. Let us make a challenge between me and you. If I find you from Sahih Hadith, corruption of the Quran, what you would do, my friend? It's impossible. Okay, it's impossible, as you said, no problem. But if it is possible, what you will do? It's, it's a scenario, it's, it's, it's like an impossibility. So it's, you're telling me to start about As long as it's thing. impossible, so you will not be worried if you say, I will leave Islam if you find it for me, right? Yeah, but I will never leave Islam so mm -hmm. because I'm uh, certain about my faith. What, what do you mean? You just said it's impossible, so why you are worried? What's that? You said <laughs> it is impossible to find corruption in the Sahih Hadith. Yeah, you won't be able to find corruption. In your in your opinion, it will be corruption, but what I'm saying in my opinion, it won't be a corruption. It will be abrogation or something like that. Hmm, okay. So it doesn't matter even if I show you tons of reference from Sahih Hadith, you will not you will not leave Islam, right? Yeah, I will never leave Islam because your interpretation will be totally different. You show it and then you say it means this, means this, means this, but you, you, you obviously won't be it won't mean that. Okay. Let us see. You see my screen? Yeah, I see it. Okay. Do you see here Omar saying, I swear by Allah, had it not been so that the people might say, Omar made an addition to Allah book, I'd I would have written it there. He was going to write there what? So, so, so who says Omar Omar is talking he swear by Allah that there is something he would love to write in the Quran but he is afraid that he is if you write people will say he's adding something to the Quran what he was going to write yeah you just read from the start I want to see what's the context And where is this narration? Hmm? Uh, I said, where is this uh, narration? This narration is a sahih. This is a sahih hadith. He's talking about the verses of stoning to death. So Umar, um, Allah sent the Prophet with the truth. Uh, and the verse stoning was included. We already memorized it. The messenger had people um, had people stoned to death, and we have done it also since his death. I am afraid the people might say, with the passage of time, we do not find the verse of stoning in the book of Allah, and thus destroy it by abandoning a duty which Allah has received. 
which is a uh, stoning the duty by Allah for married men. So yeah, you can go down a bit. We had to memorize the So here the verse was abrogated but the ruling uh, so so yeah so what's the problem with this? The problem is not it is not there. Omar himself, the caliphate is <laughs> he said this is a there's a problem here. Don't you see? He's saying this is a verse we receive it from Allah, Allah, Allah Messenger, and he did not say to us, take it off. But now he's afraid if he is going to add, because Umar, uh, Uthman is the one who wrote the Quran, he's afraid if he add it, people will say he is adding it. So now Uthman, he made a mistake. He did not add the verse. Uthman is the one who collect the Quran. Umar now is saying, we have a problem. I'm afraid that people will say, oh, the verses of starting to death is not in the Quran. Why is it in the Quran? And he went how, how do you know this was the time of uh, Uthman? This is not in the time of Uthman. Uthman is the one who read the, the, the uh, Uthman is already he wrote the Quran. Omar is, is complaining that the verses of stoning to death is missing. And he would no, love to, he would love to add it. If he's a prophet saying, you see, he did not say the prophet said take it off. He did not say the prophet told us not to add it. He did not say the prophet said to him do it this way he said i would love to add it i swear by allah had not it been to so that people might say this is the only concern he have that people might say omar made an addition to allah book i would have written it there so yeah so he's yeah he's basically highlighting the importance of the the ruling because maybe people are neglecting highlighting, the life, as he no says. he is highlighting the verse which is missing the ruling he knew the people they knew the ruling what is missing well, is the verse. he says here they were neglecting it or they were what what is missing my friend the, the he what he want to write the ruling or or the verse he want to write the verse in the quran the ruling is known yeah it says here, i am afraid the people might say with the passage of time that we do not find the verse so he was worried about the that people people say look there's such a big ruling uh, about stoning and it's not in the quran so so that's the reason he he, he was um, as, as you can see in the narration he's worried about it but, but obviously he's just highlighting the importance of it yeah so it's, it's missing and your prophet never no, said don't try it abrogated that's what it was it's not abrogated he's practicing it what's wrong with you <laughs> the muslim they practice no, the stoning to death until now because stop saying no. abrogated the verse was taken but the the ruling remained so the ruling stayed behind my friend so how you take the verse what is the wisdom of taking the verse but you keep the ruling how crazy is that imagine we have the law we, the law stay but we we delete the law i mean this is a crazy if as long the, the ruling exists as long the ruling the, the, the ruling the coming from where my friend the ruling coming from where from the verse correct the ruling can come from the quran or hadith okay no come from the verse itself allah he gave ruling correct it's a verse it was a yeah, verse he, okay yeah, gave the so verse, the verse is yeah. the ruling how you delete the verse what is the wisdom of deleting the verse and the ruling is is, is to follow there's no wisdom you can't say there's no wisdom, there tell me the wisdom, wisdom, tell me wisdom. okay i say to you you cannot drive when the right the the the, the, the light is red and then you say to me okay we want to follow this law but we don't want the law to be written there why what is the wisdom It's, it's uh, Allah's choice. You can t you can take the. This is not Allah's choice. It's the God's choice. The God is the, the Quran, my friend. Stop saying to me Allah's choice. We, show me where Allah He said, "Don't try the verse of the stoning." G give me, give me a reference. What? Give me a reference where Allah He said to you, "Don't try the verse of the stoning." Show me. Don't don't try. What? Uh, said again. I he properly. I am saying, show me where Allah He said to you, "Don't try this verse on the Quran." It's, it's obviously in, it's not in the Quran, so it's abrogated. So it's just common sense. Where it says abrogated, it's not in the Quran, so it's obviously abrogated. Where it says abrogated in the Hadith, show me. It's two, you put two and two together, so it's abrogated. Where two and two are together? Where? Show me. 
What do you mean? So you see, Allah see, says in the Quran, Muslims, you abrogate you know, you know what? This abrogating story anyway, it's, it's, it's silly for me because your Quran anyway, it's a corrupt... You, I cannot prove to you that the Quran is corrupt because the Quran itself is a corrupt. You cannot corrupt the corrupt twice. Now, let me ask you. What make you... I asked you from the beginning. What make you believe the Quran to be the book of Allah? You said the miraculous. And then you failed to give me the miraculous one after one. It became a lie and funny and fiction. I, again, I repeat the same question for you. Give me one thing you are very sure of from to make the Quran look really powerful and prove to me that it's coming from God. Can you do that? There's plenty of things. There's predictions of the future as well. What? Like what? Predictions of the future. Like what? So Allah said about the, the there's a war that's going to happen. Allah said um, it'll happen in a certain time. What Allah war? said where? exactly. Where he said, where? What is that? Uh, one minute, let me just pull it out. So it's, it's regarding Romans beating, I think, the Persians. Okay, fine, that's fine. That's so we can laugh together. Let me get some water. Go ahead. Take your time. <coughs> so, yeah, I found it. Yeah, I found it. Yeah. So the verse is in uh, 30, Surah 30, um, one to, verse 1 to 6. So this is a prediction of the future that Allah has made. And, uh, and no human could know this. Only Allah could know this. Sorry, I was away. What you said? I said uh, this is a prediction of the future. It's, it's in, uh, I'll tell you the verse now. Mm. It's in um, Surah 30, uh, verse 1 to 6. And this proves, uh, you know, it can't come from a human. This is uh, um, one of the predictions. There's many predictions. This is one of the predictions. No, actually, this is a very funny because this verse proved to us that Muhammad is a false prophet. Read careful with me. This is the chapter of the Roman. Okay. It says, Alif Lam Mim, and if you ask what Alif Lam Mim mean, you do, you do not know. The Roman was are vanquished in the near land, and they, after being vanquished, shall overcome within a few years. In Arabic, it says Bud which means between three to nine. But the Roman they've been destroyed, as let us say, they lost the war in 614. The Persian they took over Jerusalem, and the war with the Roman took very very long before they got their land back and they have vanquished or let's say uh, they became victorious against the Persian so if we calculate the numbers of where the Roman they lost the first war the Roman they are fighting the Persian for more than 300 years so always they lose they win they lose they win it's a war the Quran here predict that the Roman would be victorious again and he used in Arabic the word bit of a and he said something funny that the believer will be happy which means at this moment Muhammad he was considering himself as a Christian because he believed that the Roman are believers and they will be rejoicing but when Muhammad he says in few years he explained that he is a false prophet because the Roman did not win in nine years period it took him a lot took them a lot long if you go right now to Wikipedia you can search all the fight between the Persian uh you can search for the siege of jerusalem the siege of jerusalem you the will siege find of the... yeah the siege of jerusalem this is when the roman they took over uh jerusalem and this is what the verse in the in the quran uh, uh talking about so when your prophet he uh, claimed that the Roman they would be victorious in a few years, simply he get himself busted because he mentioned. No, no, he he got it right. He got it right. It was no, uh, my friend, because he used the word Buddha. Do you know what Buddha mean? Yeah, so it was three to nine years. So he okay. Um, and okay, how so how friend, okay how long time. okay how long it took the Roman to take back their land. But no, he was talking about the defeat of the Persian Empire. 
my friend, no problem. He's talking about the defeat of exactly. He was talking about the defeat of the Persian Empire. That's wonderful. Now, how long it took the Roman after they lost Jerusalem to defeat the Persian Empire? Yeah, it says here in sixteen fifteen AD, um, the of the person in charge of Persia attacked Byzantine and controlled the Syria, Palestine, and North Africa. Mm. And he ransacked the Jerusalem, set fire to the mm. Holy Sepulchre, and destroyed numerous cities. Mm. When the when the Roman they were able to take back their city and the uh, victorious final battle with the with the Persian. Yeah, this was 16, uh, 615 AD. 1615 is the last fight between the Roman and the Persian. I'm not sure if that's the last fight, but what I'm saying this was uh, <laughs> when they, they got control of Syria, Palestine, and North Africa. No, my friend, who is the one take control? Who is the one take mm -hmm. control? Who is the one take control? The person who's called Khusru uh, Parvis. But no, who is the one who took control? Is the Roman or the the the, uh, the Persian? Um. So the Romans. Huh? Uh, no, it was the the Romans have been defeated. Okay, so, the year, which year the Roman been defeated? Let's go to back to zero. Which year the Roman was defeated? It was a six hundred six hundred twenty-four AD. Mm -hmm. By who? Uh, I'm not sure by who was it. Okay. Is it okay if we go and read the interpretation for you? By who? By your scholars. Yeah, it depends which scholars. Which scholar you like? Which one is your favorite? We have all colors. Tafsir Ibn Kathir, you can go on that. Ibn Kathir, that's wonderful. Here we go. You like Ibn Kathir, we go to Ibn Kathir. So we go to chapter 30, Ibn Kathir. Do you see uh, my screen? Yeah, yeah. Okay. This ayat were revealed about the victory of Shabur, the king of Persia. So who is the king who was at that time? Shabur, the king of Persia, over Asham, the great Syria. Do you see it? Yeah. Okay. And then he says, at that time, the one who was the king of the Roman is Hercules, the emperor of the Roman. Do you see it? Yeah. Okay. So now if we go and we find when this person was fighting with the Persian, that will make it simple for you. If we go right now, it says that this king, during his time, the war, it was between the 602 and 628. Do you see it? Yeah. Okay. Which year those people, they took the land of, uh, or let's say, uh, Jerusalem? Uh, can, you, can you read the screen? <clears throat> so on the screen it says 602 to 628. Okay. So simply, if they lost Jerusalem in 614, and then it took them until 628 to be victorious, is that a few years? 
I'm not sure what's, what what Bali whether this is accurate or not. Um, uh, yes, yeah, I'm not, you know, I just search and uh, etc. And it's there, you know. I'm not even, I am not a scholar in history. I just search, you can search the same as I did. It says here that in the year 627, Hercules invaded the heartland of Persia. Do you see it? Let me zoom in. Do you see it? Yep. Okay. So the defeat of the Roman happened long after the nine years Muhammad was expecting. No, nah, from from my knowledge, it wasn't. It happened in. What do you uh, mean? What do you mean from your knowledge? What do you mean from your knowledge? From what I learned. See, here we go. <laughs> So you Muslims, this is the problem. You Muslim, you don't go and study and investigate. Here we go, the internet in front of you. I'm not making things up. You can go and search and check it out. And you will see what happened. And then you will see, it says all oh, this. This is history. This is not a Christian. This is not Jewish. This is not Hindu historian. They wrote everything there. And you will find uh, exactly what happened. So based on the history, the, uh, the, the last date of victory of the Persian was in the year 627. As simple as that. Actually, 628. 627, he invade. The war finished, and the, the, the Persian, they surrender. They don't want to have war no more. They accepted the conditions of, of, uh, of the Roman in the year 628. So your prophet gave a false prophecy. No, it wasn't a false prophecy. It is a false I'll prophecy. Here we go, more. the reference in the front of us. Yeah, like I said, I'll look, I'll look into it more. Okay. You're, you're like okay, a my friend. Source, okay, my, so. my friend, hold on, hold on. Let me show you as long as you are the one talking about the Roman. Okay? The Roman. <clears throat> your, your prophet, he prophesied about the Roman. And he said that the Roman, they will be the majority of mankind. So the Roman, they will be victorious, and they will be majority of the, the mankind. Read with me carefully. I heard Allah Messenger, uh, uh, peace upon him, saying, as he's saying, the last hour would come when the Roman would form the majority amongst the people. Do you see it? Yep. Okay. Is that a false prophecy or not? Uh, no idea. It's, it's not false. If what do you mean? What is, what is, where is the Roman now? Where we can find the Roman? Was the uh, Romans not Christians? The Roman are not the Christians. The Roman are Roman, my friend. I am not Roman. <laughs> Roman are people are not. It's not a religion. What Arabic word was used for Romans? What? What what word was used for Romans in Arabic? Rome. Rome. The Rome. This, this is their name before they became a Christian. They used to be pagan. Their their name is Rome. They became a Christian, their name is Rome. The name did not change. The Rome have nothing to do with the religion. So the Roman have nothing to do with religion. So your prophet here is prophesying that the majority of mankind will become Roman. So here we have two prophecies from your prophet about the Roman, which is false, proving Muhammad to be a false prophet. What no, is, what's the what's what, the description of Romans? That's that's the main my point. friend. The so description what, of the Roman is the Roman. Roman. The Roman is the Roman. What description of the Roman? This is the description. This is that they are Roman. They are no, the Roman. How do you define Romans? Huh? The Roman are the Roman, the room. <laughs> now we don't know what the, who is the Roman. Suddenly now you do not know who is the Roman. You are the one who told me he, he, he prophesied about the Roman. Suddenly now you do not know who is the Roman. Yeah, but he is talking about the last hour. My friend, okay, tell me who the are they, the majority of mankind now, which we can consider Roman. He's talking about the last hour. My so friend, yes, last hour. He said the last hour will not come until the Roman became the majority of mankind. If we say the Roman are the Italian, Italy is a small country. Egypt have 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 a, have bigger population from Rome right now. So how we can say the Roman they will become the majority of mankind? It depends what he's referring to when he says. Okay, Romans. tell me. You tell me what he's referring to. Here we go. He said the Roman. He did not say the Christians. When you say no Roman, idea. when you, you say the, when you say Roman, no, you have an idea. You are the one who said to me, "You're a prophet." He said the room. Now, suddenly, we do not know what the room is. Isn't it the Quran? Is your book who says the room? 
The Rome is the Roman, is the one who have empire, it's called Rome. So no, it depends what he's referring to. Here we go. You keep saying depends what is the first. So so now your prophet he 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 gave us wrong history. What about your prophet? He says that uh, uh, a summary uh, uh, he was in the time of Musa. How your prophet he makes such a mistake? As long as you are talking about history and etc. How a summary was exist in the time of Musa? This is a stupid mistake. Uh, but as I said, what, what, is it a narration? It says here in the front of you, all those verses. It says chapter 20, verse 85, chapter 20, 87, chapter 20, 95. He's speaking about the person he's called the Samaritan. The Samaritan he spoke to Moses. And how in the world this has happened? Your prophet, he do not know history, he is making things up and he is exposing himself. And everybody who, who, who read this, he laughs. This is this is beyond stupidity. This is not only a mistake, this is stupid. It's like saying no, to you, 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 you know, imagine, stupid, imagine, imagine. I say to you now, Trump, he he spoke to Hercules. People will laugh at me. What does Samaritan have to do with Musa's? Summary is a, is a phrase used by Quran to refer to a re rebellious follower of Moses. No, the summary the are summary are people, my friend. The summary are people. They are people. A summary is I one just, of the people. They are they are people who group. And they they are named this way for a reason. You can go and search. So when you're a prophet, he say that the summary he spoke to Musa's and the people of Musa's, then that's that's silly and that's stupid. Now, as if, a silly and stupid. Yes, it is silly because this is not the time. It's the same as when he said that Haman, he was the minister of Pharaoh. Haman was not in the uh, Egyptian. Haman was an Iraqi. Was a uh, Haman a title? Haman is a name, not a title, according to the Quran. And this is uh, not an Egyptian. The Quran even speak about the Pharaoh. He ordered Haman to build the Tower of Babel, or Babylon, in Egypt. But the, the the Tower of Babylon is in Iraq, not in Egypt. The Pharaoh said to Haman, "Build for me a tower so I can see the God of Musa." But this is not about this is not about the Pharaoh. This is about the the Babylon. <laughs> your your God is messed up. God, everything in the history. Your God, he said that Mary is the sister of Aaron. Mary is not the sister of Aaron. When the Muslim, when, when the Jews they get Muhammad busted, he said, oh, they used to call them by their great ancestor. But Aaron, yeah, so yeah, but, that, but, that's but, a, but, explanation. but Mary, she is not from the ancestor of Aaron. She is not from the same tribe. But look, this is what happened. Musa and Aaron, they have a sister. Her name is Maryam. If I ask you, what is the name of the father of Musa, according to Islam? <clears throat> Can you search Google? Abu. What is the name of the father of Musa, according to Islam? <laughs> Um, I'm not sure in Islam. Search, search, search. I can give you the answer, but I, I want you to find it yourself. The name of the father of Musa, according to Islam, is Umran. Search. Yeah, it's coming up as I'm wrong. No, no, no. I, want you, uh... I want you to find it yourself. I don't want you to be to say could be. I want you to be sure. I don't want you to say I'm making things up. I want you to be sure that this is what it says. Did you find it? Um, it, no, you're showing in it's in the Bible. It says I'm wrong. No, in the Bible, it's not wrong. The Bible. It says in the Jewish scripture, the father of Moses and Harun is Amram in Exodus. Amram, uh, not Amram. Amram. So as you see, you're a prophet. He went from the from the Jewish book. He found that there's a guy. He is the father of Musa. His name is Amram, but he thought it is Amram. So he told the Muslims that Mary is the daughter of Amram and Musa is the son of Amram. And Aaron is her brother. How he is a prophet of God and he makes such a stupid thing. So you're saying the letter? It's not about the letter only. He makes the name because both of them, 
let us say let us say the name was not Umram in the Bible was Umran. This is a mistake for first of all about the name, but no problem, let it go. But how your prophet make Umram or Umran the father of Mary and the father of Moses in the same time? And how he say that Mary is the sister of Aaron. How he is God, but he makes such a mistake. It's, it's basically a family, so the, it's like a family My tree. Friend, they, are, they are not from the same family. What family? There's thousands of years be, 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 between them. The same father they have the, for Mary is the same father of Moses? It's, it's basically a piety family tree where they all... Uh, My friend, they are not. not even from the same tribe. Mary is not from the tribe of Moses. What family? So there's hundreds and hundreds of years be, be, uh, be between them. They are not even from the same tribe. And then suddenly, Harry, uh, Mary, she became the sister of Aaron. How this happened? And Amran is the father of Mary and the father of Moses and the father of Aaron. What do you say, my friend? Um, I don't really have knowledge on this to comment. Okay, let me show you some reference. This is the book Al Kamil Fi Tariq, by written by Ibn Al Athir, the serious scholar. Volume number one, page number one fifty. The story of Musa's peace upon him. He is Musa, the son of Umran. Do you see it? Mary in the Quran, she is the daughter of Umran. And she is the sister of Aaron. And Aaron is the brother of Musa. <laughs> All right, my friend. Anything else you want to show me to prove the Quran? Until now, you failed to prove me anything about the Quran to be from God. Everything you said to me, it was a disaster. Do you have something more? Something stronger than what you have? There's plenty of things. Like um, one of the what do you call it? There's no co contradictions in the Quran. There's no contradiction in the Quran. Is that right? No. Okay. Well, let us see if this is true. Which one Allah created first, the trees or the stars? The trees, the grass, the substance, the water, or the or the stars? <laughs> uh, don't know. And try. Um, no, not maybe stars, maybe the stars. Okay, well, according to you, Allah created first the earth, right? Oh, sorry, the, the stars, the, the sky. No, uh, from the two you just gave me, which, which one Allah created first. What, from the two options you just gave me. Okay, which one he created first? When you say the stars before the water, so what does that mean? No, I don't get your point. What, what do you mean? So the trees or the stars? Okay, which one? The first thing Allah he created first. Chapter the two. first thing. I, I will help you. I will help you. In chapter 2 verse number 29 it says it is he who created for you that all in earth and then he turned to the heaven and he fashioned it as seven heavens so based on this verse what Allah created first now Allah created something else before that huh? 
Allah created something else before that. What is that? There's a it's a difference of opinion between the scholars. Some say it was a pen, some say it was water. We, we, uh, have, Quran, it was we have Quran. There, there, is there anywhere in the Quran that says Allah created first pen? No, and the, okay. even even in this verse, it doesn't say created no first. No, here it says no. It says it is He who created for you all that on earth. Then, then He turned to the heaven and He made them seven heavens. Correct. Yeah. Okay. So everything in the earth created, and then he worked in the heaven. Yes. Um, is he created for you all lies in the heaven? Then he is tur then turned to the heaven and fashioned the seven heavens. It's not necessarily it's going to be in order, Lala. So it could be just Allah's telling us that. This is how he did it. I know this is how he did it. I'm asking you, my friend, what's wrong? Don't don't be nervous. So what Allah created all first? The earth, everything in the earth, or everything in the heaven based on this verse? Uh, I'm not sure. So it depends on the my friend, how is it games, how is from my okay, youth. You see, there's no point of me talking to you. If you want to play games, I mean don't, don't tell me you're not sure. The verse in the front of you, it's very simple. It says, He it is he who created for you all that in earth. Then he turned to the seven to heaven and made them seven. So what do you mean there is not sure? Depends depends on what, what does okay, it mean. Okay, my friend, thank you. Uh, depend for, for 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 your game. Mm -hmm. I'm not I'm wasting my time with you. The bend, the bend. What the bend? It's in the front of you. The bend. Honesty is a must. If you want to talk, I can be patient with you as long I feel that you are not playing games with me. The second you start playing games, I will dump you. There's no point. Have fun. The Quran is the book of contradictions. In this verse here, Allah claimed that he created everything in the earth and then he started working in the heaven and he made them seven heavens. But this is totally different from what in chapter number 41. If we go there, we will find. <clears throat> Let us go first to chapter 79. In chapter 79, verse number 28, it says, On high has he raised its canopy, and he has given it order and perfection. It is night doth he endowed with darkness, and a splendor doth he bring out with light. And the earth moreover fast translation it says after that change the translator just just to show you how they lie that's why we cannot trust the muslim translation it doesn't say moreover and after that look we change the translator look what happened after that and after that he spread the earth and then after that he proceeded the water and its substance and after that, he, 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 he made the mountains. And after that, he created the animals. And so what we learn from this? That he created the sky, he finished it. He made the day and the night, which means he created the stars. As you see. And then after that, he starts working in the earth. But in chapter 2, Allah created first everything on earth, and then he went to heaven. Not only that, if we go to the different verse in the Quran, you will see it says the following. Here, this is some Muslims here. They say the word the haha mean he made it uh, uh, like a like a circle, but the fact it says made it flat. Read carefully with me here. Uh, let us go. <clears throat>
Never waste your time with somebody who want to play games. There's no point. Read carefully with me here. Say, O Muhammad, into the idolaters, disbelieve. You are verily in him who created the earth in two days, and ascribe into him reviles. And he is the Lord of the world. Okay, thank you. He placed therein firm hills rising above it, and he pleased it and measured therein all sustains in four days alike. So Allah, he created after he created the earth in two days, took him another four days to create all things in the top of the earth, water, trees, grass, etc. Then he turned to the sky and it was a smoke, which means there was nothing. But this is contradiction for chapter 79. Then he ordained them in seven heaven, and he made the lamps. So the lamps made after Allah he made the substance, the trees, the grass, the water. When the grass and the water is done, the heaven was just a smoke. If we go to the other verse, no, the story was different. Let us go to the verses. As you see here, he created everything for you in earth. Then he went to the sky and he made them seven. In the other chapter, he created everything in the sky and then he went to the earth and then he created the hills and the stuff. <laughs> Which one is accurate? Which one? The earth first and finish in everything in the earth, including water, grass, trees, or the stars first. In chapter 41, the stars and the lamps was at the end. The grass, it was stage number two. Allah created the earth in two days. And then four days, he put all the measure of like the substance of the earth in four days, trees and water. Then he went to the sky. The sky was a smoke, which means at this moment, there was nothing in the sky. And then he created the stars and he put the, the lamps and he made the day and the night. In chapter two, Allah created everything in the earth. And then he went to the seven heaven and he made them seven heavens or to the heaven and made them seven. In chapter 79, Allah finished first the sky, period. Everything in it. Are you harder to create or the heaven to build? He raised it high, therefore, and ordered. And he made dark night, therefore, which means now he created the stars. And after that, he started walking in the earth. And after that, he produced water and substance. And after that, he made the hills and the mountains. And after that, he created animals. 100% different order. So you said if the Quran is from not from Allah, actually the Quran itself says, if this book is not from God, you will find a lot of contradiction in it and as you see we can find tons of contradiction <clears throat> the Quran itself said if you find contradiction in the Quran then this Quran is not from Allah obviously do you see it chapter 4 verse number 82 so how this book can be the book of God Your God cannot remember which one he created first, the trees or the stars, the water or the stars, the grass or the stars.
Do we have any Muslim? So anywhere the Muslims they go, it's funny, it's stupid, and we are laughing. This is, cannot be the book of God. But you are, you've been told, you've been lied to, and you believe with the lies. Otherwise, as you see, we challenge the Muslim, okay, show us where we will go with you. From here to there, the, the Quran was preserved, we will find that the Quran is, is a joke. And even the Muslim today they don't have the Quran of Uthman. They have recitation of a guy, his name is Hafs, and according to Muslims, Hafs was a fraud. Hafs, he learned from the Quran from his father, Asim. Asim was a fraud too, according to Muslims, not to, not to me. To the point, Hafs and Asim, both of them, their hadith is rejected. Not Da'if, it's totally rejected. Because Da'if hadith, by the way, is accepted. So the second you hear hadith reported by Asim, or by Hafs, the Muslim, they dump it in the garbage. It's totally a lie, not, not Da'if. They lie to you, they say, Da'if, it means it's a lie. Da'if is accepted, it means it has a rank. As, uh, what his name, this guy, uh, the Sheikh uh, Hamza, he says, it's not funk, it pass. Hadith Da'if, there's, there's, these days there's attack in Da'if Hadith. In fact, Da'if Hadith did not funk, it pass. So he was saying to the Muslims, stop being stupid and keep saying da'if, da'if, da'if. You don't even know what da'if means. Da'if, it means it's good. Who said to you that da'if hadith is bad? Who said that to you? Where you come with the conclusion of the if hadith is bad? Why? Who? Where? Greater than in a Hassan or a Sahih. So how did the ulama deal with that? The ulama dealt with it by saying that for fadail al-amal, those actions that are virtuous, uh, you could do use a weak hadith if it was a virtuous action and it didn't relate to a hukum. In aqidah, the opinion of the Ash'ari and the Maturidi is the hadith has to be mutawatir. That you can't, that's why a hadith like the Nur and Muhammadi, which is an Ahad hadith, uh, is not used in aqidah. Or the hadith that tu'arad alayya amalukum, or amal ummati in al bazar, which is a sahih hadith. So the ulama don't reject weak hadith. They don't. And the, so this argument against the weak hadith is is uh, is a weak argument. <laughs> the argument against the weak hadith is a weak argument. Did you hear it? <laughs> I like that. <laughs> the argument against weak hadith is a weak argument. The weak hadith is is. Uh, is a weak argument. Reject weak hadith. Muhammadi, which is an ahad hadith, uh, is not used in aqidah. Or the hadith that tu'arad alayya amalukum, or amal ummati in al bazar, which is a sahih hadith. So the ulama don't reject weak hadith. They don't. And the, so this argument against the weak hadith is. is uh, is a weak argument and well thank you very much nice to meet you mr strong shake they keep lying to us anything any anything we say to them they say it's weak it's weak it's weak well your religion is weak your prophet is weak your god is weak No, today we will not explain about Alif Lam Mim because we have many hours already and it's time for me to go, my friend. I'm here for how many hours? That's more... That's... We passed the three hours already. So I want to say thank you guys for being here. I hope we did learn good today. And feel free to download my videos, cut them pieces, share them around, educate your friends about how Muslims... And you notice 
that we we don't really hit hard when we speak to Muslims even the the one they claim to be like Ustaz like the guy from Nigeria because as you notice all of them they are a bunch of ignorance so I, I talk to them as a bunch of kids honest to God when I speak to Muslims I treat them as if I'm treating a person is a nursing room because I know their knowledge is limited even the guy who wear a suit from Nigeria scamming the people taking their money he do nothing for a living except speaking about Allah but yet he do not know how to read his book he do not know how to read Arabic he do not know a very simple question to answer yet he claimed to be a stars and the funny he put in the front of his name a stars a stars I like it I never put in the front of my name is stars you call yourself a stars because you are self or stars like your prophet self a prophet self-proclaim people should call you a stars people they should call you master you don't call yourself your idiot if you call yourself master people will laugh at you people should say you are a prophet because you prophesy not you saying about yourself a prophet So the scam of Allah and the scam of the Muslims is not working and we are here to get it busted. So I want to say thank you guys for being here. May the Lord bless you. And enter we'll see you again in coming videos. We say Christ is Lord and Islam is false. If you like to read more about Islam, you can get my books from Amazon. You can just search in Amazon.com for Christian Prince or Amazon uh, Germany or France or etc. And you will find the list of my books in many languages and actually soon we will finish the, the the book which is written in the malay language which people from indonesia they can understand and they can read and i hope maybe in, in 10 days from now is going to be ready for publishing thank you very much christ is lord and islam is false getting busted every day here and see you soon again bye bye